Right. Is, <laughs> is the uh, joint rec is the joint work sessions uh, membership the same as we have currently? Is, say that again. Is the joint membership <laughs> is the joint workshops membership what we have currently? Um, no, the, the, our newest member Jan Crony <coughs> was not uh, present at the October meeting, but hmm. otherwise everybody else was here last year. Okay. So as far as a roll call, um, I've got. Uh, okay. Jamie McKenzie mm -hmm. is here. William Jamie, Gifford. Jamie, identify yourself because you're going, going. Here. here. Jamie Where McKenzie. Here. <laughs> <laughs> that very good. William Gifford. Here. Oh, gosh, I'm doing my last names. <laughs> Anthony Moore. Here. Jan Crony. Here. Rocky Smith. Here. Betty Mom. Here. Carol Polly. Here. Mayor Neely. Here. Very good. All right. Um. <coughs> We're going to go ahead and uh, look at the minutes, both of the uh, both of the wor uh, joint work session of October 10th, tw 2012, and we'll go back to the uh, last meeting we had uh, on uh, March 2nd, uh, 2012. Uh, do I hear any mo any? First of all, is there any discussion of those minutes before we go for the motions? Minutes of the joint work session first. Any oh, no. comments? Anything you want to say, Michelle? I'll note that um, we did approve the April 2nd, 2012 minutes at our joint right. work session on October 10th. So right. we're at this point just um, approving the 10, 10, 12 meeting yeah. minutes. Very good. Mm -hmm. So with that said, all in favor of um, the passage of the October 10th, 2012 meeting minutes? Do you want me to read roll call that way? Uh, uh, we can we can have a unanimous aye and let uh, you say yeah. okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I will abstain because I was absent. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Very good. All right. Um, with that, I think we uh, we have supporting materials <coughs> that we have here. Um, the the I think the rankings in the past is this the first time we've done an actual forest one through eight ranking system? Yeah. It and is. Uh, uh, just to those who may have been here before, generally we awarded I think ones through fives and various. Uh, somebody, <laughs> oftentimes some people gave ones and twos and so forth. Well, we decided to force ourselves to be a little bit more uh, uh, pay attention to what we were doing. And so we forced ourselves to uh, have some one through eights, which <laughs> changed the nature of the rankings quite a bit. Uh, but but uh, I think I think it's valuable because it forced us to really take a more critical eye at these particular issues. So uh, we had eight, eight submissions, and uh, and as I say, we do rank them this time one through eight, which is not uh, individually, which has not been the case before. Uh, Michelle, is there anything you want to care to add? Well, and just um, as part of that ranking, it's they, um, the committee is taking into consideration of the tourism piece. And is it meeting the tourism guidelines and goals? Right. Um, is there? Is there? We've got the supporting materials. I, and are there any questions about it? Otherwise, we'll just go into. Any discussions that might be on the exit reports, and I've got a question: Do we have any? Do we have any exit reports that have not come in that should have come in by this time, Michelle? Um, as far as you know, for 2012-13 grant year, there was only one that we did not receive an exit report from, and that was um, the for the teddy bear parade funding last year. See. Oh my gosh! Who is that uh, chair? It's not me, but but <laughs> your legacy. It's your legacy. Uh, <laughs> and well, I, did, I did follow up a couple times. Yeah, really? So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, they're not for fortunate. They're not looking for it. They, they aren't no, going for, no. for a request this <laughs> time. No <laughs> Otherwise, we might be having a little difficulty in granting. They all, they had it, but <laughs> they had yeah. the teddy bear parade. Yeah. But I mean, uh, get the exit report in. Okay. Yeah, very good. Um, right. And otherwise, so we've we've had all the exit reports that we have required. Yes, and Excellent. all those came in are listed there, and hopefully, had a chance to read through them. Yeah. And uh, I guess the comments from the mayor of things are already said, but uh, does anybody have anything to 
to to comment on before we go into mention of conflicts of interest, which we usually have <laughs> some. Uh, any any comments anybody would like to make before we go into our addressing our conflict, uh, conflicts of interest? Basically, what I wanted to comment was our our different ranking structure. Uh, I'll start. Um, I am a member of the Clackamas Historic uh, Historical Society. Uh, for three years, I was uh, my my wife and our kids were members of the Peace Corps, and so that's two. Main Street, Oregon City. I don't have <laughs> any specific conflict. Um, uh, the Wofford Memorial Association. I am on the board of trustees. I am a business member of the Oregon City Chamber of Commerce. I am not on the band. <laughs> I, don't race I, don't, I don't race cars, and I do love rivers, but I'm not a member of that particular group. Uh, when, we make these, when we make these declarations, they're, they're to indicate uh, the potential of any bias. If we don't have any financial or fiscal gains that we might make, we, we still can operate and vote on these, but we want to make sure that everybody knows where we, we, there is the potential of a uh, favoritism on our part. So those are the four I have to declare. I'll go to the right to Rocky because I'm sure he'll come up with something. I, yeah, and only one this time actually, and um, I am a teacher at Oregon City High School, so um, Oregon City High School okay. Band is applying for grant money. That's it. Carol? Um, our business is a member of the Oregon City Chamber of Commerce, and I serve on the Main Street Board as the City Commission representative. Very good. <coughs> um, Jan? I have none. Okay. None. none. William? Um, the Clackamas County Historical Society, I, um, my business is uh, currently making a bid for another project, but I don't think that's part of this grant application. Um, and I'm also, uh, my business is a member of the Chamber of Commerce, and I'm also on the Government Economic Affairs Committee for the, uh, for the Chamber. Very good. Jamie? None. And Betty? I am just the Clackamas County Historical Society member. Okay. With that, we can go right, uh, uh, having done that, uh, we can report out the ranking system. What has happened is that um, those of us who are here have submitted rankings. Uh, anybody, that, uh, anybody that doesn't come to this, and, and Kathy, Roth, uh, uh, Kathy Roth, because of medical reasons, couldn't be here this evening, although she submitted her rankings, she's not able to participate. We have the capability of individually changing our rankings, and so uh, our our policy is if we're not here, then the rankings are, are not taken. So anybody who's ranked but is not present at this discussion, their rankings are not included because there's a dialogue that goes in, and uh, well, things may change as the process goes some forward. Of them are right now. Hmm? Um, some of them are included right now. And people aren't here. Is that where you're saying? No, no, no. I'm, I'm saying w one, the one person who submitted rankings is not present, therefore, the rankings aren't included. Oh, okay. And that's the only thing I'm saying. And what we have here is. He may not have noticed yeah. that this is not. Well, this is no longer. That's, that, it's it's done. The Kathy is Betty. Kathy is Betty. Oh. <laughs> oh. That was my error. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I, miss, I missed that. Okay. Yeah. 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 Unless it's I, bad, then it's going to go to Kathy. We had, we, had, <laughs> yeah. we, we had a person's <laughs> ranking who was misidentified by a name. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I get it. But the yeah. rankings are correct. And so we have our individual rankings here, and uh, then they are averaged. I, uh, um, if it's all right, we're going to perhaps go ahead and indicate what the um, – what the highest ranking average is, just for, just for presentation to the public, is, uh, we're, we're doing the presentation. I don't know if you want to do something specific. Okay, can we put the rankings on the screen or not? Uh, we're going to do that after. We're going to after do that. we have the, the questions and presentations. Right. So, um, well, we'll go ahead. I think other. Is there any reason to present these rankings at this time before the presentations? No. Is after that the agreed? presentation? No, because no, yeah, after. The okay, we'll do, we'll, we, won't, we, yeah. won't, we, won't, uh, we won't discuss what the current rankings are until we have these presentations. And we'll take them in the order uh, that uh, are presented to us, which is in the alphabetical order of the organizations 
and the uh, Clackamas Historical Society. Is there a representative here? You want to come forward, please? And I did, please identify yourselves and uh, your relation to the project. Good evening, I'm Roxandra Pennington, um, the grant writer and co-manager of the project. Harry Jetkins, uh, with the museum, co-manager. Uh, facility, he's the facility yeah, facilities. manager <laughs> that's working hand-in-hand um, -hand with the contractors oh, and oh. uh, architects and designers. Now, we've all looked at the, we've all looked at your project. Is there anything else that you want to say? Perhaps a brief description in if you would. Um, do you want me to describe uh, basically? Brief, briefly, oh, briefly what the request is for. Okay, there's um, a rather large gravel pit in what could be a beautiful spot for viewing the Willamette Falls off of Highway 99 um, outside of the museum in what is called La Tourette Park, um, which is a piece of land that was granted to us with the, the, the caveat or the the qualifying, proviso. what's the word for proviso. it? With the proviso, <laughs> thank you. Um, that there need to be a museum there. And as long as there was a museum there, it would be deeded to the Clackamas County Historical Society. Um, if a museum ceased to operate there, it would go back to the La Tourette family. And it's a very special piece of property. Um, people stop on the highway and um, try and view the falls, but it's a little trafficy, a little windy out there. It's not very safe. And we would like to create an outdoor plaza where people can sit and enjoy the view, flanked by the obelisks that have been donated to us by ODOT that were part of the McCullough Arch Bridge from 1922 and tell a lot about the history, not just of architecture, but of our, our city, even down to the economic, uh, ecological restoration of the river, why they had to be replaced and what, what it represents. Um, and it, it's going to cost a heck of a lot of money to install those. Um, it's already cost us quite a bit of money to do the um, structural surveys and so on. And uh, Terry dragged them home, and now we have to come up with the money to do something with them. <laughs> and so um, we propose that that would be a good place for outdoor education. We're getting a large amount of school groups attending. We're almost open four days a week. Our, our attendance is growing. And it would be nice to eventually get them lit. Although I know the lighting is going to be kind of expensive, as you know, all know that story. And um, that's oh, about it, except that we want to add a bike rack to the area and uh, make it all a plaza that's open to the public. Very mm. good. And Mike, just for people who know of a different ladder at Park in Oregon City, this is not the one, <laughs> no. with, this is not the one with the badly kept tennis court that the city But if you want to do a project there, that would be great. <laughs> that's that's right. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> at first, I couldn't figure it out. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and we and we questioned that. I, I, that, I, I yeah. saw that. Yeah, too. we might be biased. Sure that's that we too on that. <laughs> yeah, we're sort of neighbors to this uh, this park that doesn't function terribly well, but we want to see a, a park that does function pretty well. So that's good. Um, with that, uh, are there any questions from anybody? Yes. Okay. Oh, William Starting with you. Uh, actually, there's a, probably something where we. Oh, uh, we don't have to. No, go ahead. We can give it. Go ahead. Roxanne, you mentioned that the uh, that the atten is this on? Yes, the attendance uh, is growing. Uh, and can you tell us what it is approximately and what you're projecting for growth? Well, um, I know that even though February was a rather cold month, we did have over 500 visitors to the museum, and that was really really good for us. That was about double last year. Um, of course, we're just getting on the radar of a lot of the um, senior home, senior groups, and travel groups, and school groups, and so um, we're up from, you know, we're up 100% from last year. Um, I'm not really sure how to project in a fair way. Are you keeping analytics to show how many of those uh, visitors are from outside the city? We do keep logbooks. It's voluntary for them to fill in that information. Um, and do you have a feel for how many out-of-towners there are? Absolutely. It's, it's probably about 60%. Um, and a lot of them are hopping on one foot because they've stood and looked at the falls for a long time. And they're <laughs> they, they stop to use the restroom, but pretend that they're, they're interested in the museum and then get interested once they've found the restroom. <laughs> so I think it's a good 
That's good. We're, we're mm-hmm. well situated for people from out of town. Well, that's excellent to have that faci- uh, facility available. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Uh, then, uh, uh, Carol Pauly. Um, yes, I think it's amazing that you save the um, obelisks. Is that how you say it? <laughs> Um, very, very neat. I think it's going to be beautiful and a nice place that people can stop and view the falls in a safe area with plenty of parking. Um, are you looking into putting any signage on 99 with an arrow saying falls viewing area or something like that to actually draw people up there? Yes. Um, our board member Wade Byers, who um, we we chose him as the person who'd have the most inroads with uh, uh, figuring out this the signage procedure and he's working on that because we do need to have directional signage right off of 99. Um, also uh, there is signage on Highway 205 going I believe in both directions but once someone's in Oregon City I don't think they know how to find us so that's something mm-hmm. we are addressing. Yeah. Okay, I, uh, oh, uh, Rock, excuse me, Rocky. Um, not a question really, a comment. Um, I think this is a great project. Um, I d- probably didn't rank it as high, at least the ranking that I have for it at the moment, which is going to probably stay the same. It's pretty, pretty average in the center, and and the reason for it um, is it's difficult with a project like this to really know how many people it bring, it's going to bring <coughs> in, as opposed mm-hmm. to an event that we can kind of track and know. And so that I had a challenge with that. But I wanted to make the comment that um, when we get through this process, it, it may very well be in the funding you know, level that we have. Uh, if it's not, um, I, I would urge you to apply for Metro Enhancement Grant money, which I think is actually more geared towards this type of a project. So, so I was saying, if, if you might get funding with this group, if it doesn't happen, or if you get partial funding, um, I think the deadline's May first. May first, and it's really for enhancing spaces and places in the city, and so it's, I think that's a good fit too. So you might think about that as a backup. I, I might add just for the general public here that uh, we. We have sixty thousand dollars available for grants, and we have eighty-six thousand five hundred. Excuse me, eighty-six thousand one hundred forty dollars worth of requests. So, there'll either be necessary cutbacks or an elimination. However, this is going to work. I just want to let you know uh, that's that's what we have available, and that's what's requested. It's almost always the case, of course. Any other questions? I have Betty down there. Betty. <laughs> Um, I, I noticed that you were going to do like a picnicky area and that kind of thing for this location, and I wanted to know: Are you going to cover it so they can stand and sit in the rain, or not right now? No. That's not one of the. That's. It's going to cost enough just to get it, just to get the cement poured and the yes. and the benches mm-hmm. and and we can get these uh, pylons put in, obelisk put in. Uh, that's going to use up all the money we've got. Okay. <laughs> and that could be a, something down the road that yeah. we can look at. But yes. as of right now, no. Uh, we live in Oregon and it rains no, it's true. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'd like That's to true. have people have an opportunity to view the falls that are kind of, you know, out of the rain. It's a very just good. A, just uh, a thought. Good. Thank you. William. Well, just one more clarification. You mentioned the visitors. The number was about 500. That was our number for um, for February. So that's I, one month, 500 people in one yes, month? Okay. Yes, yes. Um, um, we're averaging about maybe 35 uh, visitors when we don't have an event, just on an average day that we're open. And if we do have an event, um, upwards of sure. 50 or 60. But um, I don't have the numbers for March yet. Okay, and how long have you been tracking this then? We've been tracking the numbers very accurately for at least um, since we opened in February of 2012, since we reopened to the public. So you've got over a year's worth of stats, and you're saying the average is about? Um, <laughs> I'm just, not to not to put you on the spot, but I'm just trying to get it, because uh, we're concerned about how, how this is going to impact tourism in the city. Right. right. Um, I am not able to give you that off the top of my head because okay. our numbers are melded together between the Stevens Crawford House and right. the uh, Moot Museum. Mm-hmm. And, um, but we also have a lot of visitors that I'm not counting that go to the third floor events, and I don't count those in the museum sure. thing. Um, 
I'm sorry, I'm just drawing a blank. I right might now. make a suggestion that you have a better way of tracking who's using the facility. You might want to consider that. Yes, I just I should come prepared with those numbers, and we are really, really, really tracking it very specifically from age group, location, um, and what part of the facility they're using. But right. I just don't have it up here right now. Okay. I apologize. Thank you. And there's a, there is an uh, excellent amount that do use the facility on the third floor that it's always available to the second floor, right. which is the museum area. And there is a lot. And then if then if we have to be around there when the museum is closed, and if one of us is there and somebody knocks on the door, then they can go through the museum also. So it's open to the public when we can. It's people can Terry is famous for letting like 30 people in when we're closed. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> no, I'm not Karen. <laughs> the, the last thing I'd like to say is that um, even though I have failed to come with the numbers, which I will not do again, um, there is a way that it kind of helps n not necessarily just draw people into the city, but I was thinking that it kind of helps brand the city because mm. these are kind of the <coughs> image motif. And when you repeat an image motif throughout a city, you help brand it. And that could help tourism in an indirect well, way. Well, and I will add to that that the we always had this debate what the most um, visit what Iconic. the most visited Iconic. place <laughs> in the city was, what the what the top <laughs> tourist attraction in the city was, and it's the viewpoint on McLaughlin Boulevard and it always has been. Um, I think Sometimes you even go by there and it's so packed that you can't even park there. Yeah. Um, so yes. I think this gives, I don't think a lot of people know that they can go to the museum parking lot and have the same, if not better, viewpoint. Yeah. Um, and so this does that for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's great. Any more comments? Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Our next group is the Committee for a Museum of the Peace Corps Experience uh, for uh, <coughs> to be located at Clackamas Community College, I believe. Yeah. Well, the third chair. And when you speak, go ahead and identify your association with the group and also your name, if you would. Okay. Ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Nicole Dino, and um, I am the uh, secretary of the group, and uh, I am a, uh, a return Peace Corps volunteer from Ecuador. I was there. Gracias. Yeah. <laughs> I was there uh, 94 through 97, and uh, I currently work for Multnomah County Health Department as the community health nurse. My name is Ron Myers. Um, we say uh, Group 70, uh, 70, uh, 39, uh, 72 through 74 in Malaysia, sort of the standard Peace Corps approach. Uh, I serve as the webmaster for the uh, committee. And I'm Bill Safir, a returned Peace Corps volunteer, uh, Thailand uh, from 1967 to 70. I'm a board member. Of, of the uh, committee. And we're here because Martin Kaplan, who is the uh, president of our committee, is uh, now teaching a class at Clackamas Community College, so he could not be here. Um, well, I, for the first two, I thought I was going to beat you out in terms of earliness, but that's not the case. However, I was also in Malaysia from 71 to 74. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and at that time they had a family program. I think it uh -huh. proved to be too expensive. So two of my children, my wife, were with me the, um, on that occasion. A great experience. It's changed dramatically. And just to identify, we have another member of our board Kuma. here, Kuma, sitting back there. Raise your hand, Kuma. <laughs> um, he's our treasurer. Okay, very good. And uh, I, my understanding, this is to... Uh, uh, commemorate the 50 years uh, anniversary of the Peace Corps next year, and it's uh, to be a museum exhibit at the community college in the spring. Is that right? Spring of 2014. Yeah. We did have the, the actual commemorative uh, year was last year, yeah. and uh, we had a program. We had an exhibit at uh, the Oregon Historical Society on the in, in the actual year, but. Um, we still have a lot of the information and a lot of the pieces from that um, exhibit to 
to bring. So are you are you thinking that to, to try to get this exhibit different locations over time, or is what it, was your overall thoughts on? That? Yes, I would say so. Um, the, we figure it's 50 years of service to the world and to the U.S. Uh, even though the actual beginning year is a slightly more than 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. and the, yeah, we would like to have expanded more than just that one time and okay. two years ago to, to continue this because we have most of the, most of the uh, uh, information that was at that exhibit, which was very well attended. Uh, the Oregon Historical Society basically made a gift of many of the informational panels. Uh, if I could uh, say there's uh, almost 110 linear feet of panels, uh, uh, f five feet high, four feet high, of a lot of interesting information that allows people to get a good feeling for what the experience was like to serve all over the world in the Peace Corps. And there are other things as well, but uh, those informational panels, I think, are a, a valuable gift. And like Peace Corps volunteers, we our, our exhibit does travel because we have <laughs> right. had it in many other places uh, throughout the last 10 years in uh, in around Portland. That's right. Um, I, I got a couple of comments, but uh, does anyone want to proceed in terms of questions? Yes, uh, William. Um, in your in your application, it mentions the Pacific Northwest is a primary geographical area where the PC, PCVs Peace Corps volunteers reside. <laughs> Uh, reside. Uh, I, I was curious as to why that was, but let me follow up as to why I'm curious. It is because, again, if the intention of this is to promote tourism, we're, I'm imagining that a lot of the tourists will be former volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm trying to think of your target audience. Your tar target audience from how far would they come? Would they be spending time in the city? Do you think that this would be a destination? Uh, event for them to come to as, and it's a one and done and then they pr they might not come back to Oregon City um, I'm just wondering and, and your projected number of visitors I think the the tie-in with Clackamas Community College will be valuable for the say the return visiting aspect of it that you're interested in <laughs> uh, for some reason and I'm not sure what that reason is uh, uh, the Northwest and the Portland metro area in particular has been an unusually large source of volunteers for the Peace Corps. And return Peace Corps volunteers, again, I, no, I don't know the reason, but they like to settle in the Northwest and they like to settle in the metro area. Uh, we have uh, some inform you know, we have lists of who is in the area and it's a huge number of, of, of volunteers. When we put out the call for the loan of items or for volunteers <coughs> to work on a project, we get a huge response. Huge, huge being in hundreds, uh, huge, thousands? Uh, no, no, uh, but hundreds. There, there are actually, um, we have well over a thousand uh, names mm -hmm. uh, on lists. Um, so say so it's, it's, a, it's a large number. Uh, the Columbia River Peace Corps Association is very active. They have uh, return volunteers involved in something every day, multiple days through the week. When they have uh, large events, like uh, when they march in their Rose Festival Parade, or when they have campouts, uh, hundreds attend. Uh, I've, I've exhibited at one of their conferences before, and it is big. It's amazingly big. Yeah. In incidentally, my neighbor to the left here is this smallflags.com is the name of his organization. <laughs> well, no, he's got he's you know he's got he's got he's got he sells flags from every country oh, in nice. the world, every state in the United States, and stuff. Like so, so, so if you if you need any flags. <laughs> I just want to address your question about people who would come here. Uh, I, I, like myself, um, you know, I, I got here early uh, 
before the evening started, and I drove around a little bit, and I found a really nice little restaurant to eat in, mm -hmm. and um, it was interesting because the uh, everything I asked for they ran out of, and the, <laughs> and the guy the head, the head run out of, and you know the guy he was really apologetic and really apologetic, and you know he finally said. Well, is there anything I can get for you? And I said, well, here's my take on, on your restaurant here. Um, since you're out of everything, that must mean this is a really good place to eat. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it, it would be hard to say, you know, how many people would return or, you know, spend their money. But, you know, for me, it was nice to come here for a little while and, and just experience a little bit of it. I think that one thing that uh, will help in the return side of things is that this is an extended uh, the plan is for an extended exhibit over many months and during those months there will be uh, several kinds of activities there will be you know panels will be connecting in with the international themes at the community college when those occur and so on that basis there would be people coming back on several occasions for uh, those events as well as just to I see the exhibit. I mean, there, there, there is a National uh, Peace Corps Association uh, association in, in based out of Washington D.C. and uh, the Columbia River belongs to that. And, and so, I mean, the, the audience part of our marketing strategy is to put an announcement in that group. So, who knows who's going to be coming in from out of state from there? Okay. Yeah, now, now that I've disqualified you from making yeah. a decision, uh, <laughs> were there any other comments? Betty? Um, I, I, I was kind of curious about this. This is an interesting um, proposal. Now, you've said that this has been on display in the Portland metropolitan area or where? Yes, the Oregon Historical Society's Museum okay. was, featured the 50th anniversary exhibit. Uh, they did, I thought, just a first-class job. Uh, just amazing what they uh, were able to put together, because uh, we do not have uh, our fi finances ourselves. But they got um, generous donors to fund um, the production of, I think, just remarkable materials and a devoted space for several months uh, to put on the exhibit. So then this would be the first time out of the Portland area, is that yes. correct? And then what is the um, connection to the college? Are they committed to <coughs> supporting this? Um, because at one point I thought they weren't, but then I saw a letter of support. What the, what the uh, community college has uh, told us is that for budget reasons, they, they cannot provide uh, funds, financial support. However, they have offered their own time, their own personnel time, and they've already uh, spent quite a bit of time with us uh, planning how the exhibit would be put together. They have uh, said that they will make their staff available for all the mounting and for, for events and so on. So in other words, they'll do everything they can uh, short of uh, giving us money to okay. do the money side of it. Okay, that's great. Thank you. I have a couple of questions. Yes. Um, my questions pertain to drawing tourists in. Um, what advertising are you expected to do? I read that it was primarily by word of mouth. And would you consider partnering like with Clackamas Historical Society? You could probably do free advertising on websites and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So what's your thinking Excellent. there? And also, um, it says the exhibits will be in three different buildings. So what tools do you have to try to direct people, non-college people that might not know their way around to getting in and, and finding the exhibit? Part of that would be uh, printing up because the, the, um, the community college is willing to do the printing if we can help them. Um, so they are willing to put up uh, posters, brochures, and so on. Uh, again, we'll ourselves produce things and work with other people to produce materials. Mm -hmm. And I, I love your idea of uh, connecting it in to the other, the, the Clackamas Historical Society. When we did it uh, at the Historical Society, there was a couple of television blurbs uh, that came in. I yeah. think KGW. I, like I don't remember which one. But there were a couple that did, 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 did a show. We, we see if we could write something like that. Well. Yeah. There was articles in the papers. Paper, well. yeah. 
Mm-hmm. So you intend on trying to tap into those other right. places and, and trying to get... Yeah. As was previously yeah. mentioned, uh, the, the large number of returned Peace Corps volunteers that live in the area, uh, there is a online newsletter that is updated every week and there would be extensive uh, advertising and publicity so that all those uh, people would get information through electronic means as well. And we have gone to those meetings too to promote the <coughs> our, our venues. Thank you. <coughs> Go ahead, Jane. I have a couple. Um, your budget, about a third of the request is going for an opening ceremony cost. Can you talk a little bit about what you envision there, how you'd be spending that money? That's working with the community college, of course, but uh, there would there would be costs to advertise the opening ceremony. There would be costs for uh, the catering of food that would be made available. Okay, and insurance. You have two thousand for insurance. Um, I didn't see any mention of it. Is it something we, that we must uh, have funds to provide for insurance to cover the materials and for you know for the and you're able to obtain that uh, we uh, we can only obtain that if we have um, funds so if uh, if you folks can't uh, help us on that end we'll have to search for other sources of that money the um, the, the funding is is uh, April 1st 2013 through June 30th of 2014 as I read your timeline I get a little confused because it looks like this is going beyond the, the timeline. Um, maybe I don't understand the uh, nature of the question. The, the exhibit is extended over a long uh, time period. Uh, we assume that parts of the exhibit will uh, be there in su some of the buildings and then, then those will be down but there will be like two other locations for the exhibit so it'll the exhibit itself will be more expanded and less expanded during different. Uh, but you'll be able to complete the project by June 30th. Yes, yes, I understand. Okay. okay. I, I guess uh, anybody else have some questions? Okay. Um, the the thing you know. It's, you got the second highest request, I believe, that we had here. And of course, whenever I see zero cash match, uh, that, that concerned me. But I do see the college's uh, in-kind contribution here is, is substantial, and, mm -hmm. and uh, so um, uh, I, I guess that meets uh, part of that particular concern. Um, are there any qu other questions? With that. We'll go on to Main Street, Oregon City. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, even though we know you again, we'll ask you to introduce yourselves and your association <coughs> the project. Great. Good evening, committee. And uh, my name is Ethan Erickson. I'm the downtown community coordinator for Main Street, Oregon City. And I'm Elizabeth Fowler. Um, I've been a board member for five years, not currently a board member, but was the uh, kind of producer of this event for the last three years. And still on the event committee. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go ahead and, uh, of course, a lot of us are familiar with the Main Street programs and the First City, uh, uh, First City celebrations. Do you want to go ahead and <coughs> speak to that a bit in terms of what might be different and what's the same and how successful you've been in the past and why you need the money? <laughs> Those are all very good questions, Mary. <laughs> um, the first city celebration is now in its fourth, fourth year and it's really starting, we're really starting to understand what it's going to look like as a full comprehensive street festival. Uh, we've been able to generate a lot of interest through the downtown business community and even businesses outside of that community that want to see the downtown become successful. We really want to collapse the entire Oregon City into those two blocks in front of Liberty Plaza to try to effectively represent all of the best pieces that we have in Oregon City. Those are restaurants, that's entertainment, that's our arts community, uh, that's music, uh, wine. This year we're uh, partnering with the East 
Valley Wineries Association. Uh, they'll be bringing 15 wineries this year as opposed to just five. So we'll be stretching wow. 15 wine booths through two blocks in the downtown. We've uh, decided to create some incentives to integrate some of the other businesses in the downtown into this event. Uh, we'd like to see you know, Tony's uh, Fish Market and uh, Spicer's have a presence there. A lot of the things that you think of as being part of the downtown and even uptown and, and into the hilltop, uh, we'd like for them to be represented in this event. It's, it's, it's not just Oregon City's first city celebration. In fact, this is Oregon's first city celebration. And with that kind of an approach, I've been able to do some interesting outreach via email to <laughs> engage some of the other Main Street programs in and around the state. They're going to help us uh, with some of the promotion. We're going to be sort of cross-promoting some events that, that are taking place in some of the other communities. Got an email back from somebody in LaGrande who said my, my uh, daughter's getting married out there that weekend. We'd be happy to stop in. So it's an anecdotal example of ways in which we can increase the regional relevance of Oregon City and uh, regain that, that identity as, as, a, as a community, as a city of being Oregon's first community and, uh, and Main Street specifically being the, the first established place west of the Rockies. So looking outside of just the resources in those two blocks on Main Street from 7th to 9th, looking at the other businesses in the entire downtown, partnering with other organizations, other umbrella organizations in and around the region, all of those different entities can help cross-promote, do outreach, share in the, the funding sources that, that are required to really attract uh, a wide variety of interests. And I think it's important that this, this event is one of the signature events in the downtown. It's, uh, a lot of the events cater to maybe a specific hobby, and all of those events are wonderful for us to have. This event, the First City Celebration, is really a cultural expression of what Oregon City is all about and where it's going as a community into the future. And, and it, it really ap appeals to all kinds of age groups and interests, whether that's fine art or music or foodies that want to come down and have some, uh, you know, enjoy some of the, the restaurants that we have. So I, I could go on and on, but um, I'll stop here. And Elizabeth, did you want to add anything to that? Uh, no, I think that's good. I'll just be here to help answer Great. some questions. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't you glad well, for him? <laughs> one thing on the larger uh, request, what I've done is look at our uh, historic uh, information, which Michelle has uh, provided us from, from the contributions we've made. Um, in the first, in the first, I'm just going to talk about the first city celebrations, but the first year of the first city celebration, 2010-11, we requested 5,000, then 10, then down to 9275. And this has gone up quite a bit. Uh, and that's one thing that that uh, caught my eye on this particular request. Do you want me to talk to that? Uh, feel free, yeah. OK, I can uh, talk a little bit um, to that. Um, a, the majority of the increase in funding um, really is in our entertainment budget, adding staging, and also the extra required fencing that is needed. Last year the bridge was closed when we did the event and we were able to utilize all of the barricades and things that were down on Main Street, saving us a lot of money. Um, unfortunately that's not there and we just um, really at this point um, you know, are still trying to dial that event in. Eventually I still believe that this event can get to a point where we can decrease our funding and uh, decrease the ask um, in order to kind of get to that level and with the buy-in that we're kind of getting from the businesses downtown this year. Um, you know, every year we've obviously tried to get the buy-in from the businesses downtown, but I think that just the, the establishment of Main Street and what we've been able to do, you know, everything, the whole dynamics and bringing Ethan on as like a full-time person to work on events and promotions and work directly with those businesses has been a huge, um, you know, win for the organization and for just Oregon City and Main Street in general. Um, and so that really, like, those funds are, are, that's what it is. It's the increase in the music. We definitely want to feel like that's a huge thing to bring 
um, you know, bring the quality music up, you bring your draw up. We had added staging um, because we're not sure of the timeline of the remodel of Liberty Plaza, and so we kind of need to prepare for a different location. So our thought is to have the stage with the falls lit in the background on that street, so that's back end. It's easy access mm -hmm. for musicians nice. for load in, load out. So we definitely need a stage also, and that's like a huge, you know, and with all the extra fencing that we need to do, that's kind of where those funds are. There are two other quick little things I'll add to that. Um, this event is free and open to the public, and so instead of charging an admission to cover some of those costs of security and um, OLCC permit and those types of things. This is a way for us to really say, come one, come all, come down and enjoy your downtown. The other thing is, uh, I think this is a good gesture to the businesses that are investing in this, and not just those in the downtown, but those in and around the entire community of, of Oregon City to say, you're you're providing in-kind donations, whether that's through your staffing costs at the restaurants and the bars, uh, to do some after-party programming to engage the community that we bring down there. If it's four to 5,000, 6,000, 8,000 people, to utilize those people once they're already into the downtown, uh, you know, even, even once they go up the elevator and back to wherever they parked up in the McLaughlin neighborhood, uh, they might want to stay longer if uh, they don't feel like the party is quite over right at 9 o'clock. So it's, I think it's a way to really um, show a, a good support for the event and, and for me to be able to go back to those business owners in and around the, the downtown that I work with to say, you know, we have a big opportunity this year and it's time for all of us to kind of step it up. Other questions? Yes, yes, William. Um, a couple of things. Ethan, when you were talking about the attendance, you kind of rushed through 4,500, 5,000, 8,000. Um, I'm not exactly sure where you're expecting your expectations here. That's one question that I have for you. Mm -hmm. I like very much the fact that the stage is going to be moved with the falls behind it. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a stroke. Unfortunately, it's going to be a little more expensive because we do need a stage there. So. Um, but I do have questions about the attendance. Uh, it's, this is a one-day event? It's a one-day event, event, but the effects will be sure to last. Oh, of course. Time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Charming, yeah, charming, charming. Charming, yes, okay. You Good silver job. tongue devil, you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, thinking on your feet there. So, I'm, I'm, uh, so you do have a, a, a method for counting? The, the number of visitors, I know the chamber has people to go around. Are you doing the same type of a thing to count? The, um, the format the this year will be a little bit different. Uh, instead of doing sort of a, a, an informal head count of you know, cows in the pasture, it'll be more of directly in and out uh, what type of, of uh, folks we get that come through the gated entrances where they will uh, gated have entrances. This their is ID checks and all of that going on. So, so that um, would only be into the, uh, into the wine garden? Into the event space itself. Oh, okay. Uh, however, yeah. So the um, event does not have just a wine garden. You're able to walk oh, throughout yeah. the whole event like you were yeah. last year. Okay. So um, that's why you get ID'd when you come in. Right. If you want a drink, you get a bracelet, and then you're able to. That's why the event itself is gated so Got that it. everyone then can interact. Mm -hmm. That's why, like, the same thing. People can go into, um, you know, can't, can't take your drink into another person's establishment, but somebody can go in and get a drink from somebody's establishment if they want, as long as it's in a plastic cup, and take it out on the street with them, too. Okay. So, and that, of course, that fencing adds to your cost, too. Yes, and yeah, that's what I'm sure. saying, because with last year we were able because to use all the barricades. The that were downtown because of all the construction. Yeah, so. And you don't know when the Liberty Plaza is going to be finished, when the county is going to be finished? Jerking we have around. an idea uh, that sometime around July, Perfect. late July. Yeah. So we're right at the margin on don't this. Don't on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and we have a, um, yeah. we were thinking um, that that might, if it does open, that that's where we would put our kids zone. If it's not, Huh. If it's not open, we have a different area for a kid zone kind of area too. But okay. so, but with the, we really wanted to kind of highlight the falls and stuff too as an attraction of our downtown. Mm -hmm. like we the just idea. had them lighted with mm -hmm. the money that we spent exactly. last year from different grants, and yeah. so, and especially going to that evening, I just think that that is 
better yeah, backdrop. It's, it's Easier nice. for the musicians. Last to comment that I had to. is: Would you consider sometime having beer gardens as well for those of us that drink drink wine? <laughs> 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 drink wine. In, in fact, there, the entire event space will be a large beer garden. So. Uh, whether it's Does that whether it's the Caulfield House, the Verdict Pioneer Pub, McNulty's, or Mi Familia, or any of the other establishments uh, that that do provide uh, beer in a glass, uh, you're free to eat at any one of those uh, out on the street. Free and to eat? Can I? Well, uh, at liberty. After you're finished with your meal, you can take the rest of your glass and walk around and look at art and do the other things as well. So. Uh, with all that wine and beer, the the effect of the event may extend into the next morning. I'm wondering if your uh, if your your if your funding requests are going to cover the breathalyzer equipment that the police are going to have down there. <laughs> there we go. Anyway, Betty. Okay. Um, thank you. I I enjoy attending your event. Um, it's great. I love cross marketing. So the more you can do that, the better. Um, I was concerned about the increase of funds. Mm -hmm. Also, I um, understand the staging and the fencing. Um, I had a concern when you brought up OLCC licensing. Mm -hmm. The Main Street is not going to do that. Correct. You're not going to apply for an OLCC. Each winery person has to have that. Correct. But it's not part of your. I have a contact at OLCC I've been working with and communicating with on a weekly basis. And what we have is, an, is a plan to manage the event. Right. So that's the fencing itself. That's hiring security. That's issuing bracelets, having alcohol monitors. But uh, it is up to each establishment serving and providing that alcohol to have their own OLCC permits they'll be the ones that are liable for the alcohol and where it goes and where That's it doesn't go. That's what I go. wanted to hear. And every one of those that takes a permit will come to a meeting with me where we do discuss exactly how this will and won't work. So there, it will be effectively managed. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to make sure that they were all getting their own. Yes. Thank you. Um, I have a comment and a question. Um, I like the uh, this year the greater buy-in and participation by downtown businesses by having them sign that letter of intent to participate. I thought that was really good because I know in years past some businesses have been closed and this is really to encourage yeah. them to prepare and promote for the event and be open and make the best of it and participate in it and help make it better. And then the question is, um, it said that you're going to, are you unveiling the new downtown and map brochure at this event? Is this where you're going to, you know, pass it out to try to get people to come back to Oregon City <laughs> at a later time where they have this brochure in their hand and put it on the refrigerator or whatever they might do so they keep Oregon City in mind? The brochure component helps uh, visitors and tourists understand how they can interact in a more interactive way with the downtown and the other events that are happening throughout the downtown as well uh, throughout the summer schedule. There will be other things going on outside of the event space. So while we're tracking attendance within those two blocks, I have pretty good buy-in from businesses that are outside of that space to say we're going to do an extra special set of programming outside of that space as well and the brochure will tell people where those locations are. It is also something that will be a durable good they can take it home and put it on their fridge. This is sort of, uh, it's a peripheral product that will support the event and give them something to take home with them to, to remember that experience forever of course. Okay, as well as other downtown events. Sure, yeah, all, the entire right, summer right. schedule will be on there, contact information for the county and the city and the Amtrak schedule, and then of course a list of all the downtown businesses and uh, farmers market, all of that stuff. Essentially, it'll be a, a one-stop shop, user-friendly brochure that uh, helps people know what's going on. Know what's going on, and, and look forward to coming back downtown. That's that's the other part of this event is that it's all about not just this one event. How do they generate? How do we generate that interest, that regional relevance, yeah, for them to want to come back and spend time looking at the falls or the elevator or Willamette Terrace when they didn't have time to during this event? Okay, one more real quick question, um, and I know this is probably in everybody's mind. So, for future funding, do you have a plan to think and plan this year for next year about future funding and maybe having advertisers pay or something to help fund the event? Do you have a plan? So far, we have four sponsors that have bought in. 
Uh, every year, I'm assuming we're going to, not assuming, we will work hard to make sure there are additional sponsors from in and around the Portland area, corporate sponsors. Last week, I wrote a grant to uh, Portland General Electric. Uh, we have Hilltop Smiles that's already given uh, a, a, an amount to the event. We have um, the East Valley Wineries Association that will be contributing matching funds. There are ways in which we can grow this event, but this year is really important that we establish those relationships and that we show how successful this can be so that they want to come back and be involved in that and see it as a promotional opportunity for, that, for their organization and, and the, the coalition of organizations. Thank you. And one of the things that um, we've looked at doing in the past, and if we can find somebody to kind of do that is, like, if we can find some sort of, like, merchandise sponsor, you know, create a piece of something that, you know, whether it's um, the wine glass or, the, you know, a T-shirt or something like that, that we can, like, generate some revenue with at the event while still allowing it to be a free event um, that we've kind of kicked around and looked at in order to try to create some of those kind of funding sources for future events as well. Any other questions? Yes, Rocky. Um, comments, but more in addition <coughs> to what, what has already been said. Um, I think the answer to the the increase is is valid, um, but still, I, I had I, I was hard on you guys <laughs> on the ranking. Um, I might I might change that a little bit, but um, I, I think it's it's very obvious when we have um, and it's an exceptional event. It's probably one of the better events um, in the city. I, I consider that event. Um, antique fair and a little festival that I do like the top three events in the city but um, um, so I, 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 I do think it's an, a, a crucial event but I also um, like to have opportunities for newer projects that are coming in and it seems that almost every project that's being that's asking for money this year especially the chamber and other groups They've constantly been extremely um, careful about coming back with a lower number, um, even if their budget changes, um, because they know year after year we say the same thing again. And so, um, you know, even with the additional cost of the event, you know coming in here that you're going to hear that. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I think not making the effort. Um, doesn't sit too well. Um, I, I, I may change my mind a little bit, but I, that's what I really had a hard time with. So I, I, I'm sure you'll get, I, I hope you get funding for the festival, I, uh, and, I, and you may get the whole, you may get all of what you're asking for, but I think it's, um, you know, well, that's all I need to say. It, and, it I, and I totally um, understand the concern, and it is definitely in our, you know, minds and in our goal to create this to where we can decrease this and eventually have a self-sustaining um, event um, just with like different feedback and things it's really you know this is the fourth year I mean I really feel that like in the next couple of years it should be like really dialed in you know you when events in its infancy you know and you've done events you know you kind of struggle with the, you know, you have a concept, how do I bring it to life, and you have to make little tweaks yeah. and changes here and there to really make it relevant, and we do want this to be a great event and um, be something that, you know, not just for Main Street, but for the whole city to rally around. Well, I think that the, the, the Liberty Plaza issue is what <laughs> mm -hmm. the state, the, um, you know, the entire festival budget that I have for the Pioneer Family Festival, which is three days, is $3,000. <laughs> It's a very small budget, um, and it all goes to the stage, almost all of it. Um, so, so you know, not having a, re, a, a ready-made stage there is not having a ready-made well, stage you know there is, that is very with the deadlines of their construction and the event. It's right. You just can't. Right. No, you can't. <laughs> Absolutely not. Thank you. Yes. Appreciate it. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Well, thank you for your presentation. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Next is the McLaughlin Memorial Association. Again, as you come forward, introduce yourselves and your affiliation with the group. I know the drill. I know you do, but <laughs> I repeat it anyway. <laughs> Good 
early afternoon, late evening. Mm -hmm. It's evening somewhere. Denise yeah. McGriff, early treasurer. Early afternoon and late evening. Yes. Yeah, Good yeah, afternoon, awesome. Denise McGriff, Gloucester Memorial Association treasurer. And to my left is Michael Jarrett. He is the secretary of the McLaughlin Memorial Association. He's also the chair of the Rose Farm Management Committee, which is a subcommittee of the association. I'm basically just ready to answer any questions, but I will tell you that one of the reasons that we are here is one big word you keep hearing in Washington, D.C. It's called sequester. Mm -hmm. The McLaughlin House uh, and our parent organization, the National Park Service, has been hammered. We have gone from being open uh, Wednesday through Saturday to now being open on Friday and Saturday only until yeah. further notice from Washington, D.C. and our uh, folks at the Department of Interior. It's very sad, but it is, it is one of the political realities. We uh, want to thank you very much for your support last year. We were able to, with our grant money, produce <coughs> this fabulous brochure that we have lots of and it won't be dated and it basically finally in one place tells the story of the Holmes house and the role it played in the founding of our community our territory and our state so that was great once again we've requested a small amount of money I'm sorry to tell you that I did not spend all the money last year <laughs> some of the bids <laughs> came in higher than I thought and when I went to get the product they were lower which was fabulous so we were able to save a considerable amount of money we were able to hire, um, would you say a docent and a half, mm -hmm. uh, to because we had a couple of times when people weren't available to staff the house, and then we basically filled up the rest of the hours with volunteers. We had probably for every time we were open, we had three to four volunteers there helping out, and when we weren't able to be really busy with tours, we were able to put people to work in the yard doing some gardening and trimming the roses and the things that help make the place look great. We basically are asking for funding to help uh, hire a staff person. We really sincerely thought we were going to be able to do that on our own this year until uh, we got the notice about a month ago about the reduced hours. And the, and the reason that you probably wondering why well, how does the reduced hours affect you. We run the gift shop at the McLaughlin House which provides uh, a modest amount of income, but it is definitely income that helps pay for our staff person, helps pay for uh, you know, keeping the lights, electricity, and water on at the Rose Farm, and also our companion prop house, the Stevenson House. So we've had to really kind of move our resources in a little bit different direction. Plus, as you know, the Department of Interior, uh, since probably 2003, has not received a base increase and every year they've been asked to do more and more and they are I really have to hand it to Superintendent Fortman who's been able to adequately keep all the balls up in the air so far has not had anything fall off the the radar that she's been asked to do by her superiors in Washington DC and keep everything going which is I don't know how she does it but she has done it she's doing some amazing things at our site here keeping us up and running and we're hoping at least one of the big projects she's looking at is repointing the chimneys on both houses they both need it very much we had hoped to get the Barclay house painted this year through their uh, grant money that they have but I don't think that's going to happen Mike did you want to add anything mm, just that uh, you know the money that we request every year uh, virtually keeps the Holmes house open during our tour season. Uh, it's a very significant structure historically, but um, you know it's not one that's really well known and we have made uh, much effort in trying to rectify that to some degree. Uh, we've asked for these grants from 2008 to 2012. Uh, the first year we asked we had 51 in attendance and Last year we had 337, so wow. it seems to be moving in the right direction, and uh, we're trying to reach out to other groups and develop the property and the program. We have some special events uh, uh, associated with the First Oregon Reenacting Group from the Civil War, and uh, Denise has made a contact with the Three Rivers Artists Guild, and 
our Art on the Lawn event uh, looks to be very successful in this coming year. She thinks we may get about 100 artists out of that. Well, at least... She's hopeful. <laughs> at least 25. At least 20. <laughs> we, have have, we have to have some room for the public. If we have 100 artists, we won't have any room for any visitors. We'll just fill up the place. Well, that's good. Though. We have lots of ground. Lots of ground. The, the, the optimist in the... In the, in the Fractalist, the yes. pragmatic. Person. Yes, I'm, I'm being a little more pragmatic. <laughs> so we'll be happy to answer any questions. Well, I do know your request this year has gone down. I, I, it brings a question I want to ask to Michelle. When the funds aren't completely utilized, of course, I know you control the budget. You write the checks. They do roll over into our account. Is that right? That is, if we, if the, if all the funds from a given project requested weren't expended. Uh, they are brought in and rolled over into the next year. Correct. I only expend out for receipts that I receive for a project, so I never give the full amount up front. So right. there's never that, so, you know. So if anybody believes that you can come back. in and get twenty thousand dollars to take the cash with you, it doesn't work that it way. It doesn't work that <laughs> way. Okay, just so, so yes, so and, and if any funds are available after a project is done, it do, it does get put back into the. OCCIT budget. And is this, is this one of them that got carried over some funds from what yes. they stated? Okay. Yes. Thank you. But isn't that fungible? I mean, it just goes into one big pot. It's it does. It right. does. You know, no, it, it does. doesn't. It, it doesn't right. roll over to any other project. No. I it mean, goes back it, to the whole, not, not to a specific line item. Yeah. Correct. Fungible. Yeah. So there's no fungus involved at all. Fungible. Fungus. Yeah, fungus. Involved. For those of you that Fungy don't know me, I try to find <laughs> the best deal possible. I am an excellent bargain hunter. So when I got bids, I accepted those because that's what they were going to be. And when it got down to doing the actual project, they said, oh, guess what? It's going to be cheaper. And I said, thank you. No, we insist. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. And we know that the request is less than last year. Any other questions? At some point, they're not going to be able to ask for much less. <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> other, I mean, they can go negative, the I guess. They, I don't think most people, my understanding is that you can't have volunteers there without, in fact, a National Park Service ranger there. Is that right? No, the Rose Farm is not so. No, 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 no. Yeah. The, you yes. mentioned the McLaughlin yeah. House. Yes, the McLaughlin House, that's correct. Yeah. They must, we must have... So. Um, staff there from the Park Service in order to have so, the house open. So there's no opportunity for that particular facility. We've asked that question. Yeah, no, I know. And that's the issue with our, our store as well. Yeah. Right. Okay. Any questions? Oh, just kind of a, a funny comment. When I was reading this, I'm like, the Holmes House, where is the Holmes House? How can <laughs> I not have been there? Because I'm always looking for fun things to do with the kids. Give her a and then further down, it was the Rose. Uh, farm and I thought, okay, we have been there a couple times. It's, it's very lovely. It's the William and Louisa Holmes House. It's that's its name on the National Register, and that's its official name. the The Rose Farm is really only a nickname. So on our brochure, we tried to be appropriate and correct according to <coughs> National National Register standards. The William L Holmes House is what it's listed at. If you look up the register, 1847. Oh yeah. But we do mention several times in the brochure that it's called this. It's really nice. Thank you. Um, you know, I love the Rose Farm. It's I just uh, I'm just fascinated by that place. Just mm -hmm. and I and I, I enjoy it every time I go. And I'm wondering um, the amount of money that you're asking for, especially regarding advertising. Advertising is one of the most difficult things to measure its effectiveness because you, you're not always positive. How do people find out about it and so on? It's a very difficult thing to track. Um, and I'm wondering, why don't you ask for more money specifically for advertising? What we, what we do and what we've discovered is we've discovered basically over time, not only with the Rose Farm but with the McLaughlin Memorial Association, we can put all the ads we want in the Tribune, the Oregon City News, everywhere. It's kind of hit and miss. Yeah, it is. Yeah. What I have found to be more effective is two things. Number one, getting on the Clackamas County um, Heritage Listserv, which we have been. And number two, what we use is uh, inside that brochure will be a little insert. It will list all the events at the property for the season. And we find that leaving that around seems to have worked better. And that's what we're going to be printing is enough of those, we can get them out everywhere. They get posted here, there. We post it with the listserv. 
there are at least uh, two or three listservs. Our joint event that we are hoping to have with uh, Three Rivers Artists Guild, that will come up on the Clackamas County uh, Arts Alliance site. Uh, there's another couple of listservs in the Portland metro area that are not specific to Clackamas County. I've really found that those have really helped. Um, we also have um, talked... Let me ask if I may, if sure. I may just one, one other thing. Have you ever considered, um, if you had the money to do so, hiring a professional marketer to promote our wonderful facilities? Well, I think that's something that the, uh, the Clackamas County Heritage Council is probably a little better equipped. I think that it's it's a joint thing. Oh, yeah. I think that rather than each individual group going on its own, that group and the Clackamas and the um, what is what's the one that Roll is in charge of the oh the heritage heritage coordinating heritage council. Heritage they do that. As, well, there's so many C's and you know, and, and, and yes. I don't want to use all the acronyms. <laughs> they have also um, helped. Now, when we co-sponsor with them, the spirits, they do put a one big ad in the paper and that again helps but they also have this horrendous mailing list of people who've gone year after year and it's amazing word of mouth really helps. Yeah. One of the things we're putting some some effort into that we hope isn't going to cost us any money is revamping our website and making sure that we um, we have a Facebook page for the Rose Farm but we don't have a Facebook page for the McLaughlin Association so mm -hmm. we are working on getting one and a lot of people do that. Plus, I've also uh, connected with uh, Constant Contact, yes. which is another online that pops stuff up. People, I have a couple that I belong to that seem to get me every week, and I look at it and go, oh, I'm going to do that. So those are some other ways. That, we were on uh, the Rose Festival website last year, too. Yes. And that yeah. may have helped some. Yeah. yeah, and we had some visitors come uh, out as what well. I'm, uh, what I'm getting at, if I can, the bottom line about sure. this is tourism, and I'm wondering about how broad of a net are we, are we spreading here because it seems to me as what we have is something that is of regional importance and that we ought to be going far beyond even the, the metro area, that we ought to be bringing people down from Washington to see we're what on we the, have here. We're all, all our, our events also get posted on the um, National Park Service site for Fort Vancouver, Great. which is much bigger than ours. Great. But okay. there, but that is an idea that has been brought to the Coordinating Council, and I trust that, that uh, one of them will take the initiative to pursue that, because I think really what we're all trying to do is the same thing. And there ought to be, I don't know, maybe there should be a one central point for marketing for all of our organizations and events that we have, so it's really out there. Makes too much Someday. sense. Someday. Someday. Much. And it will happen. It will happen. <laughs> Makes too much sense. Thank you. Thank you, William. Any, other, any comments or questions? Any yes, questions. please. A couple questions. Um, thank you. Um, this is a great project. Um, I saw in here September is uh, open house for neighborhood. Which neighborhood would that be? Well, we started out just having it for our neighbors in the Barkley Hills Neighborhood Association, and they advertise it on their event page on their website. And we had 20 people show up last year, which was really terrific, who said, I've always wanted to come here, but I never had a chance. And so we're actually going to open that up to like that? all the neighborhoods. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the other question was... Um, I noticed that this year you didn't have a neighborhood letter of support because I you've done that in the yes, past. Yes, I contacted the former uh, vice chair of the neighborhood association and he told me that their officers have completely changed and I emailed that person and I have yet to receive a response. Okay, I just wondered about that. It's a, what I understand is it's a little bit in disarray right at the moment. Well, of course it is. In a building year. <laughs> it's a building year. <laughs> so then my other question is, over the past years, there's been a caretaker in that little house in the back, you know, because that's my neighborhood, so yes. I notice these things. That's the Stevenson house. <laughs> that's Stevenson's house. Is that something that you guys are going to be pursuing? Does the caretaker, like, bring income in or just care for the grounds and he keep He still supplies open? services. Oh, okay. He no longer occupies the house, but he leases the the back third of our property oh, okay. for his landscaping business. So so you do receive some income, that's good. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah, just yeah, trying yeah. to think of how you can get income. Well, we are working on a plan to 
with sweat equity to rehab the Stevenson house. Oh, good. Which will be mm. separate from our Rose Farm yeah. activities. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any questions? Anything else? With that, we'll, uh, Thank you. And you're always welcome. Call. Um, I do special tours. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And uh, <coughs> the Oregon City Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> Again, who you are and why you're here. <laughs> who are you? <laughs> I'm Karen Mori from the Oregon City Chamber of Commerce, and I'm here for money. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and money for what? And what? other questions? Two points. Uh, the 18th Annual Oregon City Open Air Antique Fair. Um, and I guess, I mean, what do I say new about it? I, we still believe we are the largest one-day draw in Oregon City, although I think the uh, Trick and Racy Car Show is, is nibbling at our heels. <laughs> 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 However, uh, we estimate we bring seven to 8,000 people to Oregon City on a Sunday, last Sunday of August every year to shop for antiques, visit our businesses, and uh, we hope that they also come back. Uh, we unfortunately are down to just a few antique stores again, but we do try to introduce people to these stores also so that we have the antique shoppers know that Oregon City is a place you can come look for antiques year-round. We're pretty familiar with it. I've been here before. Does anybody have any questions? Betty? I have a question. Of course. Um, this is 18th year? 18th. So what's the plan for 20th? Because that's a milestone. Well, I'll have to talk to my block captains and other people who get up at 2 a.m. in the morning like <laughs> Betty <laughs> for what we want to do special for the 20th. I think you but should plan something. Let me survive the 18th. Yeah, right. Technicality. <laughs> the 19th. Yes, <laughs> get through the 18th and the 19th. And Rocky, thank you for the comment on the fact that, yes, we are weaning. Um, we actually had hoped by this year that we could ask for even less. Unfortunately, given the economy, um, antique sales are down. We lost a lot of vendors who had to go get nine to five jobs. Um, <laughs> the best way to become self-sustaining is more in the way of sponsorships and businesses aren't in a position hard. right now yeah, to do absolutely. that or increasing the booth fees and the vendors aren't in a position right. to do yeah, that either. Yeah. So it's when the economy comes booming back, we may finally be able to reach self-sufficiency. Yeah. Well, I do appreciate the fact that you know, you've never increased your no. request, and um, and this year again you've uh, decreased it. So I appreciate that. My recollection: this was an event started by the city, and the city mm -hmm. asked the chamber to take it over. Is that correct? Correct. It proved to be quite a handful for city staff. Yeah. And it's quite a handful for chamber staff. And volunteers. Thank you, Betty. Thank you, Doug. But you handle Thank it you, just William. Fine. <laughs> any other any other questions? I think it's just because of our familiar area of the yes, event. Right. But, uh, Not yes, Not like I'm telling you something new this year. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. We have a representative from the Oregon City High School Band and Flag Team. You don't have a flag. Or a band. Or an <laughs> instrument. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with that? They're actually not practicing right now. Oh. So. Um, <laughs> Um, so I'm Michelle Rizzo, and I coordinate the pizza cruising for the high school band and flight team. Um, I used to be the flight team coach, but I haven't been for like two years now. Um, but I still am coordinating the event for them. So when I jump into questions, this is a specifically tied to the another event, right? The, your actual. That's a car show. Well, it's like associated with the car show. It is the car yeah. show. It is yeah. a car show. Okay. Yeah, it's a car show, and we have vendor booths and um, little carnival games for kids to play. Mm -hmm. Any questions, Mr. Smith? Um, more comment. Actually, uh, this is a. I don't know. I was out of town. I, this is the third year, I think. Fifth. Oh my god. Yeah. I think um, it's always. Uh, it seems to be almost always when I'm out of town, but I. Uh, went to this event last year for the I think it was for the first time this year um, I was really impressed 
<laughs> I mean, I guess Oregon City is going to become known for car shows. That's okay. Um, could, be think worse. Great. Yeah, could be worse. Yeah. Um, could be worse. Could be bars. Because it's bringing a lot of people in, and that was I was I was shocked by it. Um, and uh, you know, it was a great it was a great fundraiser, obviously, for the band, and I was very impressed with just the event in itself, and and um, so I was very surprised uh, by it, and I think it, it's um, it's nice to see new events come in like that um, in the city and bring people in and kind of see how they grow. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited about that. And it's, you know, it's, it's a pretty small amount of money, small requests for some of these events that really do bring a lot of people in. Uh, so I appreciate the work on it. I, I, oh. Carol. Go ahead, Carol. Okay. Um, I like the fact that in this fifth year, you're requesting seed money to for advertising to bring more people in. So it's that tourism um, factor again, which is you know the whole main thing of this um, grant, and that you're collecting food for hope too, and you're mm -hmm. trying to engage um, the businesses um, as well with um, coupons and information to bring people back too. It's good. Good. I want to be clear, is this a fundraiser for you as well? It's a fundraiser for the high school band and play team. And um, the huh. JROTC also right. um, has been helping with it, and it might actually help the dance team this year um, because they are going to be traveling with them to Florida, hopefully traveling with them to Florida next year for one of their events. So, uh, so let me get down to the numbers. Uh, about how much money do you raise doing this? It's been different every year sure. since I, the first year I didn't have anything to do with it really. Um, but every year that I've been involved, we've been able to bring it up a thousand dollars more from the previous year. So last year it was $5,600 that we were able to raise. So we're hoping to keep upping it a little bit more. And we think that with more advertising, we'll be able to bring it up. So if, so if we grant you 1500, you get 5,000. We're hoping for more. Or more. This uh, appears to be the first time that you come forward for a request. So mm -hmm. you're a first timer, which I'm glad we get mm -hmm. first timers. Yeah, That's yeah. great, and uh, you've had some success before. We hope we can, uh, we hope we can uh, assist you in being even more successful. Any other questions? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And Trick and Racy Car Club. <laughs> And I want to point out, you people who are waiting here a long time, it's because you, the name you've chosen, and you put it further down the alphabetical <laughs> list, you're just going to have to wait longer. <laughs> Neither of us had anything to do with that name. <laughs> Before your time, right? Association. Uh, I'm Mike Sims. I'm president of the Trick and Racy Car Club. And I'm Jim Estes, and I'm the coordinator for the show this year. Very good. And what do you want to say good about it? Um, <laughs> go ahead. Uh, w this, uh, this will be the fourth year. Uh, mm -hmm. We committed to do this when the bridge was going to be closed uh, and uh, try to bring people into downtown, and we think we've been quite successful. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The estimates on people down there uh, <coughs> is around 8,000 people last year. Yeah. And of those, everybody was asking people where they're from. We were assuming 60% of them were from out of town. So there's no scientific way to prove that. But How are you counting those? Well, that's what the city told us, and the ridership of the elevator <laughs> okay. had just went through the roof. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, that's what the officers and everybody else said, that the, uh, the people in Oregon City, uptown and downtown, was just skyrocketed that oh, day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Even the police department said it. So we also did some crude. Uh, we meters. took some pictures from the roof of Bush Furniture and kind of ca tried to count people. You know, very unscientific. But no, it's not. It's right. not that no. unscientific. Actually, no. it's how they count. Uh, blocks. We had some people going around, you know, informally asking people. We didn't, you know, we're a uh, all volunteer club, and uh, you know, so w most of our people are involved on putting on the show. But sure. we asked some people to go around and just ask people how they heard about the show and where they came from. You know. And about, as Jim said, about one-third came from Oregon City, one-third came from the Portland metro area, and one-third came from as far away as Bellingham, Washington, and Reno, and, and uh, 
the coast and down the valley and so forth. Yeah. So there's even a guy there from Vancouver, BC, that saw it on one of the websites mm. and cool. drove down to do that and about four other cruises. Mm. So I'm kind of curious. Was was it your group that did the arch bridge? Uh, uh, no. the, the vehicles that came over the arch. No, we didn't have any old enough. That's <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> All too tricky. <laughs> yeah, our, our cars are hot rods and muscle cars. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Antiques, and we don't have any antiques. Not old and slow. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I'll just comment uh, in terms of the current ranking, and it, I think it indicates the success of mm -hmm. some of these Main Street programs that, that yeah. have come forward. The first in our ranking at this point is the Oregon City. Chamber of Commerce is the second, and the Main Street Oregon City is the third. And I think it's because it's just demonstrated the success of bringing people into the area. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's great. Uh, yeah, one comment is we're getting more support from the Hilltop area, uh, oh, good. Good. Yeah, where we started out just downtown. And yeah. uh, if you look at our letters of support, well, some of those are from uh, Hilltop. And, and I, I, I'll make the point here that you're requesting less than you did the year before, too. We've tried to reduce our request each year. The money we request primarily goes for advertising yeah. and, uh, and security. We have a little to, bit of security. A little bit of security yeah. and, and this is a fundraiser for our Elm Pioneer Center's Meals on Wheels? Is uh, that right? Part of it. Part of it? That's great. We, have, uh, mm -hmm. we support Pope. We support Meals on Wheels. We, uh, through the Pioneer Center, we support a number of senior families. Shut-ins. Shut-ins mm -hmm. and, uh, you know. And we also uh, support a few automotive scholarships at Clackamas College. Oh. All of the money goes back to Oregon City. Yeah, we're a non we, don't, we do not go out of Oregon City. Yeah, we're a nonprofit corporation, and all the money goes back into the city. Great. Great. So, if I understand correctly, this year it's just going to be one event instead of two. Is that correct? Um, we're putting on two events, but we're only asking funding for the downtown one. The okay. one at Clackamas Park that we do. It takes care of itself. It takes care of itself. It's self-sustaining. It's been going on for 25 years or so. Mm -hmm. you know. I was thinking of the Mount, um, yeah. uh, Mount Pleasant. Mount Pleasant, the school situation right. changed. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. 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 So. so you won't be doing that this year? No. But just no. The, okay. Any questions? Yeah. Any, go ahead, Wayne. If I may, um, first, first of all, comment. My granddaughter loves this show. <laughs> <laughs> and she has for years. That, yeah. That's where she first learned what a V8 engine was. It's great. <laughs> um, uh, my question is, are you going to be doing anything new this year? Well, uh, we try to expand the vendors we have each year, and we try to bring in more exotic cars to attract more attention. I mean, we consider this to be a family-oriented event. Oh, yeah. you know? yes. And uh, so... Uh, you know, we would like to have more activities for children, but uh, again, we're a very small club. We have about 30 members, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it, it takes all our effort to actually do the show. It, mm -hmm. The day of the show is quite a lot of work. It's some nice prizes, though. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we give about 60 trophies and stuff away. Right. Yeah, and, uh, and you know, the uh, the in the cash match, whatever how you you know, matching cash. You know that that is uh, from sponsors that we have. We have major sponsors, trophy sponsors, and supporting sponsors. Right. And uh, you know, uh, as I say, the the main money. You know, we advertise in about 15 websites. We advertise in at two or three magazines, and then we <coughs> advertise in the newspapers. And we've been successful in getting spots uh, from uh, KATU and uh, and. Uh, and KGW and, and some uh, fr free spots to, uh, you know, things to do this weekend sort of things. You know? And we hope to continue that. Great. Any other questions? Oh, that's great. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. And finally, we love Clean Rivers. If you had called us, if you had called it America Loved <laughs> you would have been able to speak first, but it's not the way it worked out. It's not the way it worked at all. Yeah. Okay, Introduce yourself well, and your. Good evening. I'm Sam Dreville. I'm Vice President of We Love Clean Rivers and um, wrote the grant and be happy to answer any questions. I'll kind of start on this one. It always concerns me when I see zero matching funds when uh, there's a big request made. When it's a small one, it doesn't bother me too much. But in this case, 
it's the biggest request we have. Um, it makes up uh, <coughs> it makes up more than a fourth of the of the total th of the requests that we have. The second uh, concern that I have, uh, because you tie so much to the Blue Heron site, is of course there's the city in partnership with others are going to are going, going to be going through a master planning process on the Blue Heron site, and I didn't see any letter support at all from. Uh, from the, from the partners of the city or metro or any of that nature, and that was one thing that really concerned me. I was hoping that I'd see something maybe from, uh, maybe either from planning or parks and rec or something that would support mm -hmm. this project. Um, and I don't know if you requested or not, but those are two things that jumped up at me. Well, the co the cost jumped up at mm, me. Sure. The lack of the match it co uh, co uh, uh, concerned me, and the fact that. Uh, there wasn't any uh, indication of support from the the partnership that we have that are really going to dr drive the, the planning process that's going to happen at that site. Yeah. So I, I say that at the very beginning so you know more or less what you've got to address in terms of my concerns. Sure. So I'll totally address it. I've been working towards, you know, moving in this direction and, and sort of I think there's a huge education process with regards to what I'm proposing and what is possible, um, you know, at Willamette Falls and and sort of I sort of have a bottom up approach. Um, you know, we we had got a grant, a metro enhancement grant this last year, and and did quite a bit of work at the base of the falls. We pulled probably 10,000 pounds of the metal out of the base of the falls, yes, and did. I've already actually had several scoping meetings with. Um, with county commissioners and um, the uh, with West Lynn as well, um, and a number of the county assistant DA is paddle. There's a whole bunch of people that are very interested in this project, um, and I did ask for letters of support. The woman that carried uh, the project through with Metro, um, whom I knew quite well, um, she left, and there was sort of some uh, there was a, a change over there. I am familiar with what's going on with the RFP process and the master planning process, and uh, and I feel like this would be a really good opportunity to um, provide uh, a, a little bit more, a higher level of insight with regards to what's possible on the water as opposed to just viewing it. Um, there really is an opportunity. There is a, uh, a a movement in that direction. Even in this state, I was out in uh, Bend, Oregon, last week. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but they passed a, a $29 million bond measure, eight of which is going towards um, redeveloping the Deschutes, the lower Deschutes yes. River there. Mm -hmm. And so I went out to Bend last week for one of their fundraising parties, and you know they raised $400,000 um, in, in a night with regards to the, this dam spillway sort of um, natural area. And I, they, they've talked about developing, you know, re the, the redevelopment process at, at Blue Heron, and I think that is is a great opportunity for the city, um, if uh, if if they so choose to to be interested. I've also already showed the site to one of the most successful whitewater park designers um, in the in the U.S. and and uh, that's where I got some of the figures with regards to what it would take to actually do a real feasibility study with with engineering. There is another local here in, in Oregon City who is an engineer who also has a, a background um, in, in this process. Um, so this is a feasibility study. This would be sort of a preliminary process to, um, to like, take a look and, and really provide that level of detail to the master planning team, which is essentially looking at transportation, zoning, development. They're certainly looking at the ecological and in river-based uh, opportunities, but I, I just feel like this is the perfect time to to really um, go a little bit deeper and offer some of my expertise, which you know I've been in and around um, these types of developments for a long time, and uh, you know the very first one that I was involved with cost seventy-five thousand dollars, and and it. Uh, you know, made a huge impact in, in a local community. So I just see it as a, as a real opportunity for Oregon City. Um, I feel like the timing <clears throat> right now, the, uh, the governor just put $5 million into his budget for next year or whatnot, matching funds for remediation and redevelopment, and I'm excited. 
I mean, as, as everybody should be about what is possible there. And I see the, the falls, quite frankly, uh, through a lens that a lot of people don't, or more and more people are, certainly, but it's, um, it's a great opportunity. So, yeah. We, we, we need to lobby on that. Yep. And, I, and I mean, I've reached out to <laughs> Scott and, and Tony, and I certainly have been yeah. chirping. I've met all the metro planners, and I've been, you know, chirping in the areas. I was part of the, um, the Oregon Historical Society documentation of the, of the project, and, and I've walked through every inch of the, of the Blue Heron site and gotten a, a tour of the maintenance supervisor there. And, and uh, so there's, there is a real opportunity. I, I do realize that there's a timeline with regards to the RFP process, and if they stay on track, it's going to be, pr it pretty much dovetails with this timeline with regards to providing, you know, a, a more detailed level of support for, um, for looking into what's really possible down at the river level. Mm -hmm. So, and so, and it would, yeah, I think it would require a little bit more of a, of an oomph from the city to say, hey, look, this is actually really important. We want to make sure that that, that is um, considered. So at any rate, question? Yes, yes. thank you. Um, I think it's a great project. Yeah. Um, my question is, how are you going to bring tourism in for um, the amount of money you're asking? Sure. So, so like I said, this is the funds here will be used to not only do public outreach locally, um, and run, you know, a, a sort of a campaign here, but it's also going to be to to bring in um, experts that are going to be able to provide the schematics and the engineering and the, you know, um, and sort of the the business planning behind what it would take to do something here, and um, and ultimately the results of of this kind of a study could have huge impacts. I mean. Down in, the, in the millions, down the you know down the road, yes. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, this is that. again, this is a feasibility yeah, study. By yeah. no means is this, you know, yes. this is a this is a, a medium term view to yeah. long term view of of what's possible, and it would it would require a large fundraising effort and and, um, and more uh, steps beyond above and beyond this yes. first initial step, which. I'm, I'm bringing to you now. We've so. had a lot of um, citizens comment about our visioning and master plan, and they want it to be open and not have any boundaries on it. So we can't discount that the water won't be studied at this visioning master plan level. Yeah, that's fine. So, um, but my my. Um, I kind of think that you're just, you need to tie better in with the vision and master plan, in my opinion, because, you it's, know, I think that's that exactly they, why we would do it. Mm -hmm. So, but I don't know that this is going to bring us tourism okay. people, mm -hmm. in hey. my opinion. Well, I think, I think, well, I mean, all these things combined together will. I mean, the, the, the site is great, but it's the falls that attract people. Yes. I mean, really, is I to this is together. the real opportunity. So. Um, I'd like to understand a little more about what your vision for it would be. If you were given free reign and unlimited funds, what would this project look like? So it's basically uh, stream bed modification and or it's, it's you know, reconfiguration in such a way that, uh, that it would be usable for, you know, paddlers, essentially. So would and this be for people to come down with the flow of the river? Would there be, you know, static features? Would there be yeah. places for people just to slide on their behinds? Or, you know, I don't know. Yeah, slide <laughs> on the behinds, you know, maybe <laughs> run down. <laughs> Ideally, yes, if it was, if, it, if I had unlimited funds, I'd, it, you know, uh, Olympic training facility for whitewater slalom, which is where what my background is in and, and um, you know, where there's courses built for the Olympic Games now every every four years. There's a whitewater park that's developed and built specifically for that purpose, um, and there, there are there's opportunity there. I mean, you've got the gradient, you've got necessary volume year round. Um, I've already spoken, reached out with the lead engineers at PGE and the fisheries guys. It's a, it is definitely a complex issue, but I've been sort of working through it for quite a while because I just know that there's an opportunity, and with the with the redevelopment, um, I I feel like there's a you know, I feel like it's becoming a lot more tangible, and, and timing is obviously really key. So, so with regards to like you know Bend, they're they're doing more of a, a surf park where it's going to be um, designed for stand up paddle boarders, and there's going to be three different features: um, a more advanced feature at the top, and then an intermediate feature, and then some 
beginning features. They've got they're going to have a couple different channels. There's going to be actually three different channels um, on the shoots that they're doing, and you know each location is just it's it is unique, and Willamette Falls is a really unique spot. So I'd have to sit down with a map and and show you kind of some some different options of what would be possible, and most certainly bringing in some people that that do this you know on a um, professional level I think is would be required to be able to push the project so this forward, might be so. the water equivalent of a, a ski slope it might be a way to yeah absolutely that. yeah that's this uh, yeah okay that's, that's pretty much what and is there uh, some means for people to trans would be some means for people to transport back up yes Generally speaking, and the way I see it again is like when you're designing, when you're doing a redesign of, of something like Blue Heron, it's like it would just be, we would be remiss not to really focus on, you know, the design, like a, a feature like this. I mean, I don't believe, yeah, so I just feel like this is, it, it's, it's pushing a concept forward that not that many people here are, are that familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, in, in Mississippi, um, they just finished a project in Ohio. They just finished a huge project in Colorado. There's like 38 projects, and and really they've done the economic analysis of what it does for a community, and uh, as far as you know, increased economic activity and, and visitation as well. I mean, or Willamette Falls in Oregon City is is geographically located in in, in a place that. Uh, on the west coast where you'd have people from California and you'd have people from you know Seattle coming down from Canada I mean people would this could has a lot of potential I believe in being you know a, a, a enhanced resource that would you know receive visitation from from all over the place so yeah, Mr. Smith yeah this is the one project that just made me really <coughs> excited <laughs> Yeah. And uh, so, I, but I want to I want to uh, qualify that with with a lot of comments. Um, the mill project is so huge, um, and I don't think any one of us, well, at least the commissioners sitting up here, don't go a day without talking about this this project and this the mill and what's happening. And um, so, when you say this is the right time, I think you're partially right. Um, I think it's the right time to start talking about this concept. Maybe not the right time for the grant just yet. Um, I, I was so excited reading this idea. I think um, I don't have much knowledge of it. Um, in fact, I think the only real connection that I drew from it um, right off the bat was the Olympics. And watching, I, I was when I was watching the Olympics, seeing the kayaking and, and seeing the, the the thing, the basically the route that they built for the the white water um, part of it was incredible, and and so I could see this becoming a, um, you know, the falls are one piece of of what's going to happen at the mill site and with what's happening with the Willamette Heritage Area uh, group and and all these other things. So there's all these pieces coming together. And I think this definitely should be um, a piece that's in in that discussion going forward as a piece of the master plan and bringing this up. How could I this agree. piece fit into it and all of that? The, and so I'm I'm really excited about that. I, I don't have any doubt that that something like this could be a huge tourism draw. In fact, but there's and there's a lot of other aspects of the falls site that I think we believe can can bring even more tourists in than that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that it's just now that we're realizing that now the state's realizing that mm -hmm. and at the national level they're realizing this. Um, so this is the first time that we've really seen this yeah. much traction yes. um, and, and we're really excited about it. Um, I just had a real hard time in terms of how it fit in the grant this grant process at this moment, um, mainly because it's paying for a study, and is that what this grant's supposed to do? Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I had, had I struggled with, and um, so I, I, I kind of think I kind of think that we we need to. Um, that master planning in general needs to go forward and all these aspects need to be part of it and then once that vision is reached then the grant process then I think that's when we start 
tying into how we fund it and, and get it going. I mean, that's kind of what I feel. Um, I think it might be too early exactly for that specificity, specificity but um, I, 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 I was just really excited about it. It is an exciting project. Um, there's no doubt yeah, about and it. Yeah, and I know there's going to be so many things very similar to it as we go through this. So I don't, if, if you don't fall in the top ranks of these funding, I don't want you, that to be a discouragement um, in any way. In fact, I think the, the discussion between what you're envisioning continuing with the city um, should happen. Mm -hmm. should should continue Absolutely. and mm -hmm. and maybe there's other ways of finding funds to to, to look at this I don't know mm -hmm. yeah I just I've thought this was a good opportunity yeah. 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 to ask for funds and to, and to contribute yeah. because yeah. you know I mean this is a great we, opportunity to bring this project yeah. to we, us we, because we don't have a lot of knowledge about this that's the first time I ever this heard anything about it I just, I just don't know that the grant kind of fits the project mm -hmm. and we, so that's where my we've we've just we've got out there now a request for proposals for the visioning process right. uh, and that's going to be coming forward uh, uh, it might it might be a perfect timing mm -hmm. in I a year from now for this request right. when yeah. we're actually getting the the master plan together and working together on a common vision and, and you'll be part of that common vision um, uh, and I'm, 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 I'm inclined to agree with uh, Rocky here that uh, you're excited, and you've kind of put us ahead of the schedule in terms of what we're, and we're moving fast. We're moving very rapidly. It's all going to move fast. It's and I really like that. fast. That's why I'm putting it out here right now. Yeah. It's like, oh, hey, let that. it be known this is a possibility no, and certainly I'm, something that if I'm, we wanted gonna, to activate. I'm going to make a suggestion you know. that um, we might want to, um, I, I would suggest that, that you hold that. We, we might even have a, we could even have a special uh, meeting of the OCCIT to look at that as a possible mechanism for, you know, your input. Uh, uh, this represents the accumulated money that we have available for the motel hotel tax. It comes in throughout the, throughout the year. And uh, we might be able to, as the visioning process comes forward, we might say, well, is there a component that we could actually fund this, and it might even come available. Bef we could ma maybe make it available before mm -hmm. the actual granting cycle. And I know it's moving fast, and I'm doing everything I can mm -hmm. to keep yeah. tabs on right. it and trying right. to understand and grab, put my head around all the different <laughs> elements. I mean, I'm on the State Marine Board, just, you know, strategic plan for non-motorized paddle sports <laughs> for the next 10 years. There's money there. There's definitely um, interest. And, and, I mean, the time is, I mean, it's, it's starting to happen here and, and yeah. in Oregon. There's precedence being set, and the opportunity, I believe, at Willamette Falls is, is unprecedented. So could, could you talk to me a little bit about the 50000 from PGE that's set aside for a Whitewater Park feature? Yep, so as part of the, the hydro relicensing right. um, agreement on the, for right. the dams on the Clackamas, there was a settlement agreement, and American Whitewater is one of the organizations that, that you know, um, represents the the paddling community and and as part of the settlement agreement not only did they they agree to um, to improve access at different points on the Clackamas and create some you know infrastructure but they actually have set aside fifty thousand dollars that's just sitting there um, for construction okay. of a feature a, a whitewater feature on the Clackamas so and they've done a study and so you know I, Tony Conkle with PG is the guy that is sort of in the process of working through the other access points on the Clackamas and it really just hasn't nobody's pushed the issue nobody's I'm from confused. locally has said They've hey done a you don't, you don't mean Tony Conkle that's our planning director I didn't mean to I meant okay. Tony um, right. uh, it's a different Tony I'm sorry Tony he's got it Tony um, good catch what's his last name that's okay I'm confusing my Tony now yeah. you mentioned that so 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 they have already done a feasibility. No, study? they so they have money it's sitting in a pot that has been dedicated money. to construction. Okay. And so if you know mm -hmm. if it was put forward in such a way that like hey, I I don't I don't exactly 
know the ins and outs, so it needs to start to be addressed. I think that there's some opportunities in Oregon City um, that, uh, you know, the lower Clackamas and or Willamette Falls, I think, is the biggest opportunity in the... With end. respect to time, I won't... I mean, I think I kind of... Um, I don't want to repeat what the, the other members have said. I think it's certainly um, a, a really exciting idea. Um, I was here, um, I remember uh, Hood River, when Hood River wasn't, and what it is now with, right. with the windsurfing. I mean, it's phenomenal. Oh, yeah. 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 If we need anything to, to, to show what, what the potential is, I think Hood River area is just, you know, it was a, a little stop in the, you know, the road before windsurfing. The other thing is, um, I guess, working with, um, for Clackamas County, have you, have you had any discussions with the Clackamas County Tourism? Um, and I'm on the tourism board for Clackamas County, and I got a letter of support yeah, from them, and they've, they're, they're willing yeah. to dedicate staff time to During this. Territory yeah. pieces so, yeah. I mean, they're... But, but are they willing to, to, to put some funds into it? Uh, I mean, I didn't get them to, to uh, commit to a certain amount, but, cert but they, you know, with regards to their staff, they're uh, really excited about this opportunity as well. I think this, this would be a really exciting partnership well. between the city and, right. and the county, because, right. so, you know, as I look I at their priorities... I don't know who else to talk to at the city. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm here yeah. and that's why I'm saying hey this is that's great so. no it's great yeah, we will thank you very much I thank oh, you I had questions I oh, yeah, William. I mean, you didn't call for questions <laughs> well we I was oh, getting yeah. Yeah, no, nobody, nobody asked permission to talk anyway <laughs> we just blurted out I'll ask I'll ask I have a, a whole bunch of questions about Good. this Thanks very much, Jen, for bringing up the issue of partners because this is obviously not something that you are going to be able to do as a single organization, that there's going to have to be a, a significant amount of partners, and I would like to see uh, a more detailed you know, uh, list of how those connections are going to be uh, working out. I, um, you had in your application the potential of $200,000 in commercial economic opportunity. Uh, two, two million, yeah, and that's oh, basically million, sorry, citing yeah. a study from uh, from the Clear Creek in Colorado, and, and there's a number of different studies that I could present that would educate you on this topic. Was that a two million? Uh, per year. Yearly. Annually. Okay, and that yeah. is not just in Oregon City, of course, but that's for the region? That is, yeah, that's the amount of economic activity that, that this type of development created not in Oregon. I haven't done this study in Oregon City. This is a case study that occurred in, in Colorado. And so. Um, I'm also, uh, I have a list of these things, so excuse me. No problem. I'm happy to. Talking to about, you talk, talk about, about stream bed modifications. Yes. But I'm not exactly certain what stream bed modifications are, and I have a concern about the environmental, ecological impacts of what that would do, for example, to the salmon run. Mm -hmm. You're not going to. Danger any of our sea lions, are you? Sea lions are dangerous the same. We're not going to be building sea lion platforms if that's what you're asking. No, and 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 certainly that's why you know I don't profess to be the the ecological expert, but I am you know I, I definitely am interested in in healthy habitat and and um, I'm also interested in in. Um, in the integration of restoration and human-powered recreation, and certainly there are a number of user groups on the lower river, fishermen being one, um, you know, paddlers, other paddlers, other boaters, and then obviously you've got all the fish, <coughs> and that is part of what needs to be studied and needs to be sort of fleshed yeah, it's out. It's an in intricate order. web of users of that area. We just yeah. found out, I mean, the City Commission just yeah. found out about uh, a group of swimmers that use Clackamas yeah. Cove yeah. as world-class yeah. training yeah. for yeah. freshwater open, open water, swimming. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you we know, use it for, for kayaking, too. Yeah, so yeah exactly, yeah. and that, mm -hmm. that tie-in is great, and I like the idea more about the, the whitewater possibilities yeah. on the Clackamas. Right. So, but I have a, 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 a number of other questions. One is, <laughs> one is about the... Um, the length of the run seems relatively short for a whitewater run. I mean, it's it's not Exciting a mile. It's, it's, yeah, oh yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. But it's, yeah, but it's there, what? It's less than a mile. There already hard. is there already is whitewater below the falls that is surfable uh, or you know playable um, <laughs> at certain water levels. I mean, obviously it's tidal, so it it actually 
presents other challenges as well, just the fact that it is a tidal area below the falls and, and there already is a run out and there already is opportunity up there for this discipline that I speak about, um, yeah. whitewater paddling, uh, but it could be enhanced for sure and it could be you know, modified in such a way that it was really good. And and then all of a sudden it becomes a draw because tons of people want to come and uh, I would be very impressed if you could tie this into reopening the locks. Well, mm, you yes. know, oh, that's good, good thought process. Yeah, yeah for yeah. a lot of reasons. If you can tie the locks into this, you'd have mm -hmm. me behind you 100. percent But see, one concern that I have is that I realize that there's a lot of man-made structures on both sides mm -hmm. of those falls already. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not pristine by any stretch of the imagination. But I have a concern that if we put something in that is, that is, um, you know, what I wouldn't want to see is it look like a, some sort of a, a, a carnival ride, you know, where you're just having a lot of brightly colored boats, you know, flashing down the river for a short time and then portage them back up and, and running down. That, I don't know what to picture because I don't know, I guess I haven't seen a whitewater park before. Well, you can look at the schematics that they sort of developed for Bend because they've already kind of been through the process there. How long of a it's, run is that? Um, it's pretty short, less than a quarter of a mile, a couple hundred yards. Really? Yeah, really. Okay, so this is the eye-opening information for me is yep. because I, would, I imagined a whitewater run would be, you know, a mile or two anyway of, right. of rapids. Yeah, the, the lens that I look at through, look, you know, look at this through is, is you know, athletic excellence and Olympic sport and that kind of thing. I've spent my entire life training on facilities like this. So the only vision that I have is that somebody's up there in a kayak and they go off the falls and then and they then bop up <laughs> and then they, they come back and they do it again. Right. Kind of a, right. you know, <laughs> so the they don't the right. the <laughs> Yes, sometimes they don't come back and, and you know. There's not going to be any liability for the city here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. It's a fascinating yeah. concept, and I and I think that you know Metro is you know very interested. I mean, there's a lot of aligned interests, and it, it's by no means a simple process. It is it's it's absolutely complex, but. Um, and I know, and the last um, the last area is that of the fact that this this request is just for feasibility study, and yet in your in your proposed. Uh, uh, your proposed, proposed budget, you have materials, equipment, supplies. Yeah. yeah. What equipment and supplies? You're going to need $3,000 of equipment and supplies for a feasibility study. Yeah, so just with regards to these guys coming out and bringing, I mean, they're engineers and professionals in their own in their own right, and I wanted to make sure to have a line item there for for that type of, you know, and it, it there's an integration that is absolutely need will need to occur with regards to the whoever is chosen for the RFP process and the and the master planning process. I mean, this is happening at the same time. Right. So, yeah. so the opportunity that I that I see or is, you know, is to sort of say, okay, the the city has expressed interest in in really doing this, and here are some experts that could also play into it. I don't know that the master planning is going to be paying for this type of work. So it might be that next year when they come up to you know um, present the master plan and and change zoning and that kind of thing, maybe that's the time. Um, I just felt yeah. like if there's you know well, this is definitely on the radar now. Yeah. To do mediation yeah, the radar and they're going to start really looking at what's possible. I, I think that the city would be remiss not to sort of demand it. And if you if there's a way, if there's a mechanism for for bringing in some expertise, I think it would benefit. I think it would sure. it would benefit the city. So yeah, yeah. So, and both the, and maybe we ought to be getting some money for you from West Lynn as well, since yeah. they well, that's the a other lot thing of money is from West Lynn. Yeah. 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 yeah, I mean the city. <laughs> there's, they're good about writing checks over yeah. there. All the money <laughs> partnerships. The yeah. Partnerships. We, we <laughs> just for the record, with regards to the 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 grant that we got this last year, we had we have eighteen organizations that have helped out with the. With the Ripple Legacy sculpture, mm -hmm. so Ripple Legacy. we're by all means collaborators, and I think you'll see. It I like with that. To I like that very much, and I think mm -hmm. the analogy drawn better is to Hood River rather than just building a ski slope. Mm -hmm. You know, ski slope is is much more static than the dynamics of water mm -hmm. and and You're biking and everything that's trying to occur here right now with regards to just increasing access and Anthony wants to do I'm curious comments. about the comment about uh, integrating the locks into this I'm curious as a kayaker would uh, it be feasible safe for a 
kayak or a group of kayakers to ride up in the locks and out? They have. And they have. Oh, they have. have. I've never gone been up correct. there. I, I mean, know. that is a channel. Oh, yeah. That is a modified yeah. channel so that goes up uh, there. And come down so. the side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. And, it, and it's on the western side. That's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and open those gates so. faster. <laughs> <laughs> so. anyway. I, I just have a couple of real quick questions. Yeah. Um, so do That's you cool. think, and this is kind of addressed <laughs> to the mayor as well, um, do you think there's a possibility of this being included as part of the master planning <laughs> process oh, since yeah. it is a um, study? And I, to me, I see that more relevant there and also, you know, working together with all the partners so they can be included in the process. Because I think that's important, too. If something's done totally independent without the partners involved, you know, knowing and being part of the process, it could create problems further on. And the other thought, too, since Kathy isn't here, I have to ask a question for her. So I'm wondering how the tribes would feel to any change of the configuration of the falls. I know it was mentioned there's already man-made structures out there, but I'm just wondering, you know, what they have you talked to them at all? Yeah, so I wonder what the, take they would the have. The first step that I've taken uh, with regards to this, this whole thing is, is there's a boating deadline um, issue up there, and so... You say voting or boating? Boating. Boating. Boating, boating okay. yeah. So, and it was... It, it was um, an administrative rule that went in in the, in the 70s to, to keep fishermen out from the base of the fish ladder, essentially. Mm-hmm. And, um, and now there's other forms of boating that are happening up there. And, and, um, and I actually spent some time last summer with, uh, <coughs> with a member of the Grand Ronde tribe and was talking to him about it, and he seemed very interested in, in that kind of a thing. I also know that the tribes, is, that there's... There's other issues. There's multiple tribes that have <laughs> jurisdiction up there, and this is something that is going to be, um, you know, there's there's definitely is the multiple multiple concerns. But what I will say is, you know, the not only do the Confederate tri- tribes of Grand Ronde, you know, do they access and they utilize the site, but even you know, Warm Springs, they've got. You know, a, a whitewater operation on the Deschutes, and there are some Warm Springs members that I'm mm-hmm. starting to, you know, look into um, to try to potentially bring to the table and see if we can. I mean, you've done a lot of work on that, yeah. and a lot of talking to people, yeah. and we're reaching out. That's great. Yeah, and we've, you know, I've already pulled all the constituents together mm-hmm. with the Clackamas County Sheriff's Department, West Lynn, uh, the, the trustee. Uh, Metro and we already had a, a, a meeting last fall about the boating deadline and um, the first step for the Oregon State Marine Board was um, to tr- just see if there were any major objections and there really there weren't any so okay. the tribes is still kind of the last issue mm-hmm. in that one and then the next step I mean one you could see uh, the you know the ladders are flows around the ladders are directed in such a way to try to get as many adults going that particular way. I could see, and what that does is it limits really the tribal netters from getting fish jumping jumping the falls like they used to. Uh, it might well be that you could come up with a system that improves flows for you, but also makes a, a an adult fish access that uh, goes up the falls, which yeah. it doesn't, it happens, but it's not as common as it used and to. And Tim Shibahara, who's the lead fisheries guy for PGE, he's an avid paddler and was pointing out different play spots below the falls right. that he surfed, and we were comparing notes And last year. Um, so it, it has to work. I mean, fish are the number, <coughs> would be the number one concern. Mm-hmm. And um, hmm. so... Any more questions? And then oh, this public safety piece, right? I work a lot with the sheriff's patrol, and those guys would love to have another place to train. And yeah. you could turn this into a regional training hub for uh, for whitewater rescue, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. would be another right. benefit. <laughs> Thank, Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Let me talk about the process. What we're going to do, if anybody wants to change a ranking on their sheet, please do so, and we'll pass them on to Michelle. She'll enter those in. Then what happens is that these will get an initial sorting according to the according to the average ranking that we have. And then it's been my custom to negotiate. Yes. Uh, (laughs) to try to get as many projects covered as we possibly can. Yeah. It usually happens when um, when there's a very uh, close breaking here, but 
Uh, we got two coming through. Any more that uh, you want to send in? Just send it in. R cir cir circle your circle your circle circle who you are. And and then we'll take a short break while she works. You're not getting a break, <laughs> shot. But we are. <laughs> she had all this time. Hopefully not. She okay. Okay. We'll take a ten minute break. All right. Oh, wow. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah. I'm gonna get them all. Thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Do you want it to go there? No, I didn't mean. Okay. That's
I think, I think uh, we're I think we're all present and accounted for up here. Uh, Michelle, you'll be putting this on the screen up here, or okay. So we'll be seeing the we'll be seeing the um, the ranked order in just a moment. Uh, Michelle will bring bring it up on the screen behind us, and we'll be able to put it onto our monitors. Oh, the lights come down. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Bravo. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. It worked earlier when I put oh, no. Put that toggle to the left. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You click it. Oh. This? Yeah, and then push oh, yeah, it to the yeah, left, and you'll pull yeah, up okay. the screen. Okay. I'll do it. <laughs> but nobody's coming up. We'll all huddle around your computer. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no signals. Okay, right. please hold. Make sure this is it. Yeah, yeah, they, they don't. There we go. Thanks, there we go. All right, well, we have them in front of uh, us. Phew. Thank you, Tyson. That makes sense. <laughs> um, the ranking and the order that we have here is the Oregon City Chamber of Commerce, Trick and Racing Car Club. Uh, this is from the top to the bottom. Main Street, Oregon City, the Guelphin Memorial Association, well, that's behind us, so you can see what the ranking is. Um, the uh, <clears throat> where uh, we have, the, uh, are we going to have the accumulated amounts in there too? I can go ahead and put those in at the full value. Okay. For starters, I never like to assume and put them in. We'll just see where we are and where cutoffs are. Okay, and um, we've got the uh, <coughs> the running totals aren't running totals yet, are they? No. Mm -hmm. Yes, the running total at the bottom, 86,140 oh, matches yeah, what we have. That's right, so very good. Now, <coughs> what we have available is, is $60,000. Now, the first question I want to ask in terms of the ranking is, <coughs> Do we want to allocate the We Love cr uh, Clean Rivers at this time? I do. I suggest that we not. Um, not because I don't support the idea. I think the idea is excellent. I just think that there's going to be other opportunities that will allow that to be more fully integrated with our visioning process. And uh, I would like to see this funded from another source. I would support that. Yeah, I, I want to make sure that it does get funded, but oh, my funded. question again is can it be part of that master planning mm -hmm. funding? Can it be part of the process with all the partners involved? I, I, I agree it's an important project. It I, needs to be funded. I don't want it to fall off the radar no, at all. No. I want it to oh, it come to a... Uh, I just don't know. think it's... Oh, uh, this I would support giving them a re, uh, reduced grant, uh, maybe half of that to... Uh, to kind of get started and then uh, look like the mayor suggested look at it at a later date okay yes. if, um, the 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 point is how is how is the money going to be allocated <coughs> over right. the year yeah uh, we we don't have they they're really not in a position to to access those funds no mr smith um we have what six Sixty, sixty thousand. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, so if um, if we do that, if if we hold off on on the the rivers, um, not the shots. <laughs> I was saying the rivers. I should say. Um, where does that? So essentially, if, if we take that out, where does that where does that put us well, with the last one? It goes. It's all everything's covered. If that's pulled uh -huh. out, that's what I think. And is there any any left over? Yeah. A little. How much? Let Let me make a suggestion. <clears throat> Let's go ahead. We've done this before. Let's go ahead and uh, talk to the individual groups to see what whether they can reduce their request. Um, we can. 
we could put the uh, uh, we could look at the uh, accumulative total in that basis. Uh, we might be able to fund all of them except the other, but have a reserve amount that can right. be accessed that at a different start. point. Right. And at that point, it might be through the through the master planning process, we might be able to identify a matching funding mm -hmm. for that right. effort once it's right. scoped yes. out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to simply simply uh, in terms of the uh, we've seen the OC chambers uh, request drop from years before. Uh, <laughs> Trick and race and car clubs request has dropped. Main Street's gone up. Would tw Main Street be able to handle twelve thousand dollars in the in the contribution? Does Main Street want to speak to that? It's approximately two thousand dollars above what you requested last year. Tony, come up. Yeah. <coughs> if you would be so kind. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, as I think any other groups would say, um, you know. Everyone feels like they would do what they can with whatever they were granted. I'm going to speak to maybe some of the same point that I said last year when it came to this. Mm -hmm. um, there is a ranking system in place for a reason. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. to kind of move us away from that process and take away from some of the things that are ranked maybe the highest on the list, I don't know if that's the best approach because there is a process in place. And so um, maybe looking at the lower end of the spectrum first rather than taking away from the kind of the events that you see meet the criteria of the grant process a little bit more and that do bring in uh, that tourism component to our city. So again, I would say just encourage you to stick to the process and the ranking system that you've created. Um, it's not quite the question I asked though. <laughs> um, I, do I think that we could create the type of caliber of event um, without this funding that we're looking to do? Um, no. I mean, I think we would work with what we have, and we would have to go out and hit the pavement more and things like that, but um, to really make this a signature event for the city um, with this support and kind of the momentum that we have going on Main Street, you know, I think it's going to be, this is a big year for this type of event because the bridge is open. All the improvements have been done on Main Street. Um, we have great new partners with the wineries um, that Ethan has talked about. And um, I just feel that this is a, a moment for us to really shine and make this event as big and successful as it can be. I don't know, Ethan, do you have anything you want to add to that? I think you did a great job, and I agree with uh, the entire sentiment. And uh, I'm happy to, any other, happy to answer any other specific questions if there are any. <clears throat> well, that's. Um If I may, you go ahead. I think that uh, Ms. Fowler raises a legitimate point that if we were going to be starting to um, chip away by reducing some of the uh, some of the grants, it would be more prudent to start at the bottom and work up rather than take from the highest rated, which we obviously feel are the most important. I agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> and I'd like to add something too. Um, when I'm looking at the running total I see on We Love Clean, Clean Rivers, if <clears throat> theirs was 10000 short, then that would be the total funds allowed, and it would fund um, everything except the last one, and with an exception of $10,000 that We Love Clean Rivers wants. So they get 18500 instead of twenty eight. Is that right, Michelle? Would you like me to put that in there? Uh, I'm just I'm just kind of posing that to yeah. the to the committee to see what they think about that um, I, as I, a possibility. Well, I would I would like to see a cash match to that, which might come through the master plan. Right. So if we had it, let's see what would happen. If that's our eighteen five, fourteen, two fifty or something. Like fourteen two fifty. Yeah. Fourteen two fifty. Yeah. yeah. For we love Queen River. I did. And then that that essentially has you uh, trying to make a match. Cumulative total, <coughs> right there. Right there. And then you have there's, five thousand. There's four thousand left over. Three thousand. Not much left over yeah. for the yeah. museum, the Peace Corps museum. 
Uh, it's only about 4,000, which probably is not going to be able to do it for them. Um, uh, as <clears throat> I think, that, you know, to t t talk to the committee for the Museum of the Peace Corps experience, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's uniform, really, in terms of its ranking. Uh, they're, they're all eights and sevens, and I think it's because it's, it's not clear what the tourism benefit, benefit would be to the city. And I don't know if there's anything you could do with what amounts to a little over $4,000 on the, would be the thing. And I don't know if there's anything you could do with that. I don't think you have to be here anymore. I think we made the decision. So we're not touching. As long as we're not made the decision. No, no, I see. We have it, but I, I mean, I don't. We, there was no indication we wanted to strike from their their program. In the horse trading mode that we are in right yes. now, mm -hmm. um, yes. rather than cut out uh, or cut down the uh, the peace score down to four thousand, uh, what if some were were uh, shaved off of the. Uh, of the third from the bottom, the parapenultimate, uh, the Historical Society grant. What, what if we cut the Peace Corps in half, took 35 from the Clackamas County, then that would, that would be our 60. Well, cutting the Peace Corps in half won't make too much difference because they're going to run over the total of 60,000 anyway. So any cutting that would have to be done would have to be above the line, above the line there, above the uh, committee. Um, I still think that we clean river waters needs to go before the commission and it needs to be a part of our master envisioning plan. Yes, it does. I what, don't think it needs to come out of this grant. I agree. I do too. I think I we've got to find another mechanism, and like we, I think a lot of us agreed. We can't allocate the monies from this anyway without the, without having part of the master plan right. there. Right. Um, I think it's a great project. I just don't think this is the right venue for it. We have at least in four votes for that. Well, we, we're going to go ahead. You yeah, want to you want to you want to put that in the form of a formal motion since it's not ranked at the last in particular. Um, the motion would be to recommend that the city commission put We Love Clean Rivers into the master visioning plan for that area. I, I second, second that. Oh, sorry. No, okay. Okay. ladies first. <laughs> I second that motion. Sexist? <laughs> I just think it's an important uh, project. I just don't it? think it fits in this. I think it yeah. will be funded, but mm -hmm. it just doesn't okay. fit in this so if, if that's the case, then there, then uh, we've got no reason to strip any of the other right. funding. Correct. Right. And so we can go back to, if we, did we strip anything at this point? No. We didn't change anything, or did we? we no, no the, only, the only adjustment I made was cutting We Love Plain right. Rivers in half. Yeah. So let's go ahead. We can, what so we can, what we can do is zero, zero out Well, that. there's a motion we on the floor. Yes, oh, sir. excuse <laughs> me. We haven't voted on, on that. Yeah. There's a motion on the floor that, uh, yeah. well, by Ms. Mom, that we re recommend to the city commission that the funding for this project be put into the master visioning process, seconded by Ms. Pauling. And by implication, remove it from this grant yes. process. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We have a motion moved and seconded. Let's, let's, let's vote by person. Yeah. Okay. Um, Jamie. Yes. Um, Rocky. Aye. Jan. Yes. Um, Carol. Oh, no, you made the motion. William. Yes. Are you well, she the doesn't, doesn't mean that she'll vote for it. I know. <laughs> and William Eury, yes. Yes. Um, Anthony. Yes. Carol. Yes. Eddie. Yes. And Doug. Yes. Okay, so that's unanimous, and uh, so we'll simply uh, put the zero on the uh, tentative award, and uh, what <coughs> we'll report this out of the next commission meeting of a decision that we've made. Uh, that we won't be making a decision at that commission meeting, but to make sure we have admitted that uh, they uh, they are going to be a partner in this visioning process, and uh, uh, with that, 
we're actually where are we at with funding? Well, we're we got we've got money left over, uh, not much, but uh, sixty thousand available. Oh, in the total I see. Is I fifty-seven thousand six hundred and fifty, um, and so we have a carryover. Woohoo! I move to approve the grants as they are I'll at second the moment. That. I'll second that. It's been moved by uh, Rocky Smith and seconded by William Gifford. Uh, vote, please. Betty? Yes. Jim? Yes. Anthony? Yes. Um, so, okay, um, Jamie? Yes. Rocky? Yes. I missed Rocky. Carol? Yes. Um, William? Yes. Zach. Yes. Unanimous vote. Thank you for all your patience out can there. I, it's been a, a long time. We've got some other things to take care of, but I don't know if people can. I, can I please make a statement before everybody leaves? Everybody except for one is going to be funded. So can everybody please cross market everybody else's project? It's yes. very important yes. that's right. that's that absolutely. gets done. Thank yeah. you. Yes, thank you, everybody. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Give all that information okay. to Karen and she put it on the chain. <laughs> I have one other item. Yes, Okay. Okay, go look at it. We're still not done. Um, as we went through the agenda, I wanted to make sure that um, the discussion item got brought back. Um, administrative policy 2-11 is a policy where all boards and committees need to report out to the city commission each year. And the question is, because <laughs> the commissioners sit on this board, it's not. do you want to report out to the city commission? <laughs> now, mind you, hmm. <laughs> and <I'm laughs> from a different standpoint, right. yes, you sit on the, on the commission and you sit on this board. Is it something that you want to have televised out no, each month, well, maybe uh, annually yeah. by f as a annual report by OCCT CCIT, probably. so the rest of the community yes, hears. Probably, yeah. I, I think so. I think that's important that yeah. the rest yeah. of the community yeah. hears what we're doing here. Have Absolutely. Because is this going to be on cable access? This will not be. Not as I don't think this will be on cable access. It'll be available on the website. So, so as long for as streaming. Yeah. For, so so if somebody wanted to go look, they can go look. But oh. if they're they're not watching TV, they're not going to see it. The next question would be, who would want to report out for it? You would be appropriate. <laughs> oh, I love it, Michelle. Yeah. 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 Put that yeah. 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 You're volunteer. We, we Not only it's the chairperson, but since uh, the chair is the man of the mayor. We we can we can we can uh, have a motion that actually our staff person report to the city commission. I'd make that okay. motion. Mm -hmm. Second. All in favor. Seconded by. All in favor. Aye. You guys can go. This is all. And, uh, <laughs> Thank, Thank you very much. You. If, if, you wanna, you. if you want to sit down with me and another person in terms of, of uh, our, 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 our real support for the We Love the Clean, Clean Rivers project. Absolutely. In the process. Yes. Absolutely. And, yes. And, uh, Absolutely. Yeah. And I would. Sam, did you, are you hearing this? Sam? Sam? Sam, are you hearing this? Yeah, come here. Okay, <laughs> focus here. <laughs> Where, uh, Michelle is going to be uh, reporting out to the City Commission the decision here, but we will be giving tremendous emphasis to uh, the visioning process that you, uh, you put forward and make strong recommendations that that be included in, in the planning process. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's important. I think it belongs yeah. there. Yes, absolutely. In that process. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not, the only question that I had that I didn't ask was, that this doesn't, you don't, guys don't see a really good fit for the enhancement grant. Like, well, I don't know. I see a I'm little bit sure. more there. Yeah. yeah. I, I wasn't sure. I see I, more there. Broke that uh, out this might year, be. Yeah. So I was like, oh, this is way more tourism than yeah. it is infrastructure. It, it, yeah. it is planning for it is. I yeah. see, yeah. I see it more of a. Well, I think this is an appropriate. I, I think this is appropriate application. Yeah, this, this is this is more appropriate. I think this, this is the most I think that is definitely group. tourism. I guess kind of both, but I mean, would it be the feasibility study? Would not be, the feasibility no. study. Okay, but what the would that be under metro? Itself. 
My suspicion is the arguments would be the same if you try to take this to Metro. Yeah. I kind of feel the same. I'm not, too. you know, I yeah. wanted it's to. A different, it's a different, the citizen uh, membership is not the same. I think maybe one or two. I'm not sure. You're not on one. the Metro. I'm not on it. No, I'm not on the Metro. I don't, uh -uh. I don't think, we, oh, uh, actually the citizen yeah. members are all different uh, mm -hmm. on the Metro yeah, enhancement. I, I, I'm, you were, you're talking about matching fundings. I don't understand exactly how it works. This is my point well, for bringing this idea to you guys yeah. and then from here, I'm sort of like, well, we're going well, we're gonna, yeah. to, yeah, we're going to champion your gonna be, idea. I'm not going to, I don't have any affiliations with any of the RFP uh, people. No, you better not. No, you better yeah, not. You better it's not. best not. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, no. I don't, I don't no. know what's no, going no, no, on no. there. And I, no. I, this whole yep. process is moving so quick. Right. That yes. It was like, I just, I submitted they, this. and They are they supposed to set up the visioning it. process, and you would be part of yeah. the, right. the right. input, the public right. input to right. it. Mm -hmm. But we, we, nobody should be lobbying that RFP. No. Know? Yeah. <laughs> process. Well, yeah. So, so I will I won't bring this to Metro Enhancement if you don't think that that's the right place for it and I'll just let it Yeah, go I think and we'll see what happens. But I, I think you came at the right time to oh, yeah. be included Absolutely. in the vision yeah. process because I think yeah. that's the right area to yeah. be included in that process. Right. Right. Absolutely. So Thank you very much yeah. for yeah. doing yeah. that. Thanks so. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Yeah. And with that said, um, I if you have any feedback on the the packet, since this is the first time doing anything electronic, please let me know via email. Rocky? This process is <laughs> so much smoother. Actually, so I didn't want to speak it. about the packets. I, I know. No, no I'm not, uh, you're um, not. You can't. My opinion is already known on that topic. Yes, yeah, so we um, <laughs> You can do that, Rocky. <laughs> future agenda item. Okay. Um, I think that Miss um, uh, Fowler's um, point about the, um, you know, with that um, specific, with, with, with the, the comment about, um, or, or looking at projects that have asked, at looking at the same projects that have come back year after year mm -hmm. um, that have decreased um, their ask. Um, you know, we've always talked about that as a as a part of our concern with right. some of these projects, um, and it obviously is pointed out that some of these projects are our best projects. They are. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't disagree with, with with what she said. I think though we need to put in our grant that we demand, that we expect them to be lower, and that yeah. should be a requirement. Yeah. That they should be lower from every not from each organization. Another, you know, that the individual organization can pitch a new project, new but project. if it's the same project, we expect it to be the ask to be at least the same or less. Yeah, yeah. and I think that Another needs to trough. be. Mm -hmm. I think that needs to be um, an expectation. That's yeah. part so is of that a future I mean, agenda I mean, item or is that a motion? I think we can actually. I, I think. Well, I don't know if we need to talk about. You guys feel the same way. I think we can vote on it. Criteria. That's why I rated them. I think you're saying that it should be explicit. Well, the, yeah, because then we can say, you know, it, it won't be a, a debate at the end mm -hmm. when we oh, get yes, into right. yeah. moving yeah. things around. Because um, yeah. I think she's right on that. Yes. We, yeah. we, you know, we we're going to say this is our for a reason. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, go ahead. You want to put a motion? How do I say that? Well, I, to say I, I, I think I know. It, to make okay, it, please. Okay. Uh, <laughs> The motion re that reoccurring grant requests for the same project will only be awarded at a lower amount than the previous year or will, or will not be awarded a higher amount than the previous year. Reoccurring grant requests for the same project. Second. Carol first and second. Okay. Aye. 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 Oh, unanimous? And Is that a unanimous? Aye. Yes. Anthony? Okay. 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 Look. I think this this we need to report out to the commission, and I yeah, would suggest no, that we. Uh, so it's not. I, I don't know if the city commission has to vote on it or not, but we can bring it to the city commission. Probably we do. I don't know. A vote do on. We operate. Do we? Well, we operate under our own, own bylaws. Mm -hmm. Does this have to be approved by the city commission or not? 
to add that statement? I don't think so to the application. Yeah, no, we, no, we can just recommend okay. it. What I would suggest we do path. then, you, you'll be reporting yes. this out to the City Commission too. And I think right now, you know, as soon as possible, we send this out to all previous applicants. That's fair. Uh, so that they, so they have the they, got order. a big lead time. They know mm -hmm. they need to mm -hmm. head for more matching funds and so forth. Mm -hmm. So we get this out uh, at, for right next year's for plan. next year for next year. So they know now uh, uh, to develop their planning strategy. And that was not a unanimous. Do you you did he was at, he was funding. Well, oh, he yes, voted that. I don't think we should be. Oh, okay. well, so I just wanted that on there. Thank, I'm sorry, I, I misread you. Yeah, yeah we Wait. both did. Wait, let's do let's do the roll call. No. Yeah, I think yeah. we yeah. should have done that. Eligibility of the grant request right. that reoccurring projects are subject to a reduction in funding. Upon review. Oh, it's already on there. review. It's already on, yes. on review, but we didn't re, uh, on I review. It needs to be, yeah. That's our responsibility. Now we're putting it on them. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, yeah. I mean, that's the it's big difference. It's, it's not. It's had, but yeah. Yeah, but, but it, that was our determination. Now it makes them okay. responsible for it. Okay. We can still reduce it more. And that we still could be yes. more, yes. Right. So let's do a roll call. So since we don't have a unanimous vote, wait a minute, we got a question. That, that doesn't violate any of the 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 trust charter. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, we're not adding anything in that would would um, conflict with the legal documents that set up this or set up our mission, correct? Probably, yeah, I could yeah, I could double check on that, but yeah, I don't. I, I can't think of anything offhand. Okay. We're voting. We're voting on it. It, it. We have that authority right now uh, in, in terms of our review, and it's stated in there. We're just if if it passes, if it passes, it's it's going to the century mandate it. I would make a um, a friendly amendment that we. Well, we first we have one list. one motion on the table. I'm making an, um, uh, an a motion okay. of an amendment to that okay. motion. Sure. That that um, process be reviewed by the city attorney to make sure there is not a conflict. Okay. You, and that, why did you say it to the motion rather than amendment? Oh, that's fine. Who made the motion? Carol. So Carol made the motion. So is that agreeable to you? <laughs> yeah, it's agreeable. Yeah. Is it agreeable yeah. to who the second of the motion? Yes, Rocky. Okay, so it's agreeable. Okay. Okay. That. Okay. Oh. With that said. Um, William. Yes. Carol. Yes. Betty. Hi. Anthony. No. Rocky. Yes. Jan. Yeah. Jamie. Yeah. Doug. Yes. Now the reason on the amendment, if if, if we follow Robert's rules of orders, we have to make amend, vote on the amendment first, and then we have to vote on the motion. Original motion. This way, we just combine them all together. Okay. With that said, if there's nothing else, we'll see you again next year at this time. All right. All right. No, we'll Thank see you so the much, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think the, I think the process is going to be That was great. And I think the sports <laughs> ranking on.